With great power comes great responsibility. Compromise where you can. Where you can't, don't. Even if everyone is telling you that something wrong is something right. Even if the whole world is telling you to move. It is your duty to plant yourself like a tree. Look them in the eye and say no. You move. Never step onto the battlefield of ideas unprepared. Before you enter the fray, you need a plan. And there's no better place to get one than right here on Tactics with host Caleb Colquitt. The Situation Room goes live now on News Radio 1440. And good evening, everybody. Let's see, is my sound actually working? I hope it is. There we go. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much for being with us here on Tactics. This is our live election coverage. We're going to be just sitting around, watching the election coverage, seeing the numbers, bringing you the latest news, and, you know, talking about what's going on, the status of the election, and not just the status, but sort of give you some background on it. And here to join me on our adventure are my guests, uh, who will be – there we go. The Clarks are actually with us tonight, Laura and Matt. Now, Laura, you're actually, and this is because she's in my house, not because she brought them, uh, drinking out of a Auburn cup with an Auburn blanket on. Does that mean you're supporting the former Auburn coach in the election? Weirdly enough, no. I voted <laughs> Sessions, but I do say War Eagle with great frequency. I gotcha. I gotcha. By the way, um, just so everybody knows here, let's, there we go. Um, just so everybody knows, and I am I'm kind of trying to uh, navigate this as I uh, as I go, because this is going to be an experiment for us. So there's going to be some technical difficulties. You're just going to have to live with that. Uh, we're really only broadcasting right now on Facebook. I know normally we're on about five or six different platforms tonight. We're just doing Facebook. It's not because we're being censored, although that has happened before. Right now, <laughs> this is not that. Uh, it just so happens that we've been having some technical issues on this side. Hopefully we'll get those cleared up, but hey, this is the first time I've done this before, so give me a break. Uh, but we'll be here all night watching the coverage and just wanted to say a special thanks to our friends at WSFA who are also our news partners at News Radio 1440. Uh, thanks for them providing the coverage. We'll be using them as our, our primary source uh, for all of this. And, and we actually have WSFA on right now to where we can watch it. And, and guys, you're on screen as well. Uh, one thing that I do find annoying about this is they've got some reality show going on right now in the middle of the election coverage. It's like that weird America's Got Talent thing. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, oh no. It's, is that, no, America's Got Talent. Yeah. Okay, it is America's Got Talent. And they had like some weird ninja twins on earlier that just looked like a bunch of ninja pedophiles. It was weird. <laughs> yeah, the, the mustaches kind of reminded us of... Toby Flinderson's unfortunate mustache from the end of The Office. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was pretty bad. Yeah. I, oh, I don't watch Cow. The Office, so I don't know what you're talking about, he but was, I can picture it. Yeah, he was very creepy. He was growing out a mustache to raise awareness for prostate cancer. So he's a creepy guy right, with a mustache. Right, no shame November. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, he, yeah, he, he walks he, – he's walking with people on the streets and saying, smile if you love men's prostates. You know, that's not, that, that's not creepy at all. No, no. Things you should not try at home if you're considering um, it. On a scale of 1 to 10 – uh, one being a uh, a kitten, and ten being Joe Biden. How creepy would you say that is? <laughs> is it possible to be creepier than Joe Biden? That is the question. No. I, I might have to put you it at a be, nine. You could be Ep Epstein. Yeah. Okay, that's a fair point. Yeah. So that's like, a fair point. See, that's the thing. Joe Biden's not the worst. There are you know yeah. child rapists that exist. Yeah, so. there was Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. Yeah. We just haven't caught Joe Biden yet. Maybe. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. I don't, see, he's, here's the thing. I don't yeah. think Joe Biden's actually a pedophile. I just I think he's super creepy. Yeah. Uh, agreed. Agreed. You know, it, it's interesting. After watching all the stuff with Clarence Thomas and Roy Moore and Brett Kavanaugh, he's now had an accuser come forward. And I'm, I'm for, you know, evaluating every case on its facts. I don't know if it's true or not. But after watching it happen to our guys a lot, you know, even I feel a little bit for Joe thinking, all right, is this, you know, is this made up? I, I don't know. You just got to let it go forward and see how it plays out. But I don't know. I just feel like there's like creepy old men and they're just creepy and old and men i will say this too and i don't know how much of this is actually playing a, a role here um 
when it comes to that, I think that men are less likely to believe in creepy old men because, like, women have had creepy old men come up to them. <laughs> like, all like, nobody the wants time. me and Matt. <laughs> nah. yeah. It's the worst. I seriously have had a client that came in. He was really old. Ooh. Oh, gosh. We, we got some uh, – sorry. We'll, hold, hold on to that story, Laura. We got some coverage coming in. All right, Barry Moore. All right. Hey. Winning by 10. Now, granted, you know, this is 5% reporting, so this could be wildly different 10 minutes from now. Yeah. Uh, but still, Barry Moore with a commanding 10-point lead. That's honestly kind of surprising. Like, I, I really thought Jeff Coleman was going to be a lot. I mean, not only did he win the regular, um, he was polling very, very well even in the weeks following. So, you know, props to Barry Moore for coming out with a big lead early on. Agreed. Well, it's early. And then one big thing that you'll want to watch out for tonight is with coronavirus. A lot of people aren't going out. And if you think that your candidate is already far enough ahead, then you may get comfortable and think, well, I don't have to risk myself going out to vote because my candidate's already ahead a lot. And there's going to be a whole bunch of people who think that. So, so you're saying that there might be people that think, well, I don't have to go out. Jeff Coleman doesn't really need my support. He's kind of got this one locked up. That that might actually be a factor. I think that'll be a factor across the board. You know, I don't know that it's enough to swing the vote like several percentage points, but if you've got a neck and neck race, mm -hmm. you know, that can make a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, I honestly think a lot of politicians are kind of hoping that that happens too. I think they're betting on that, especially the underdogs. Yeah. I'm sure they're hoping for it. Oh, wait. Apparently the internet's like a full minute <laughs> behind. <laughs> I was gonna say I, I thought that's what we saw a minute ago. Yeah. I tell you what, Debbie Bay actually brings up a good point, so I'm gonna go ahead and ask uh, what you guys thought about this. How was uh, voting in the time of Rona? Uh, you know, I didn't. There wasn't a lot of people when I went. There's probably like one other voter in there. You had to wear a mask. So you had to wear a mask. You had to wear a glove on one hand when dealing with the, the iPad part. But you had to wear just one glove. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have to moonwalk directly afterwards? That's exactly. I mean, they didn't require it, but I did. Yeah. So anyway. I think that's totally appropriate. Granted, there's some Michael Jackson moves that I've been talking about. People that are creepy with kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, certain moves you and don't want to imitate. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but that one was pretty cool. And I think I got a pretty big round of applause by, like, the two people in the building. So nice. that was cool. Yes. And, uh, oh, you get to keep the pen because they don't want your Rona pen. They let you keep the pen? So, yeah, they didn't let you keep the pen. No, no, they didn't. Oh, well, you weren't cool enough to keep the pen. <sighs> I need them. They gave me a stylus. To, really? Yeah, so I didn't get a glove. Uh, they gave me a stylus. See, I had a stylus, too. Yeah, and so, and then you had to throw the stylus away. Really? Oh, that seems wasteful. Yeah, I know. I don't know about that. This one was attached to the iPad. I was I was kind of thinking, why don't they get like a bunch of sticks from outside that no one would miss? I don't know if those would work on a touch screen. I don't know what kind of touch screen it was. Like if it was a heat sensitive touch screen, maybe. But you were just talking about bringing in sticks from outside. I thought my dog would totally bring them all in. Dogs can have would. Um, they could. They could because they would definitely you know, vote for whoever gives them the most treats, which is basically true of the average voter anyway. Right. So much in they're, they're really not far <laughs> off. I actually wore my dog mask, mask to vote today, so I like to think my dogs voted with me. It's an interesting thought. It is. Uh, That's what I got. <laughs> <laughs> my mask has a has prison mic on it for you know those who know the office so initially they seemed to think i was a gang member that was you know showing up to intimidate voters but uh, i think they got the message afterwards that i was okay so yeah, yeah um i, I actually now happen. saw it earlier today uh i was wearing my bush reagan 84 shirt yes mm -hmm. and I, I didn't like choose that i just i mean literally because i'm a a single dude, like, the way I pick my clothes is I close my eyes, reach into my closet, whatever my hands find, that's what I'm wearing that day. That doesn't but change it, with marriage. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, that's good to know. There is another person there that, you know, can tell you if you're about to make a fool out of yourself, depending on what you pick, and that's, that that, that is nice. She's saved me from faux pas multiple times. So the wife is really just the filter. Yeah, yeah, pretty okay, much. that makes sense. 
But well, anyway, so I, I walk out with my Bush Reagan shirt on, and uh, the lady at the pole, and I, I hate that I didn't get it, but, you know, like I said, I'm a guy. I just, I don't focus on what I'm wearing. I don't even know what I'm wearing half the time when I put it down. Mm-hmm. She's like, were you even born in 84? And I thought she was asking me a question, like, if I was old enough to vote. And I'm like, no, 1989. <laughs> <And> it's like, <laughs> it's like, okay. And then, like, as I'm walking there with my ballot to the table, I'm like, oh, I'm wearing my Reagan shirt. So that's why. <laughs> Y'all, it's a marching band. This is making my band geek heart so happy. <laughs> see, our audience can't see that because they're just seeing what's oh, yeah. being broadcast on the internet, not the actual... Yeah, so in case you don't know, the America's Got Talent has a marching band on stage, and they're just doing really Wait, cool things. Um, this is the one from Montgomery, isn't it? I don't know. Like, seriously, they're having... I didn't know that. One of, yeah, one of the bands tonight is from Montgomery. Huh. Wow. Wow. JD, it looks like Jeff Davis. I think it is. Oh, I bet it is Jeff Davis. Huh, who they're pretty is also, neat. Is, is also being voted upon to whether or not their school's name will change tonight, so that's interesting. Yeah, that, that, we want to hear the results of that for sure. Seriously, mm-hmm. if you're the band director there and you're watching, call me. I want to help. So like, this is awesome. <laughs> how hilarious would it be at the beginning of their performance, they're Jeff Davis, at the end of their performance, they're like Malcolm X High or something. <laughs> like, like, we changed our name during the performance. <laughs> I'm like, well, that didn't help out, guys. It's like the people in eastern Oklahoma who woke up, you know, one morning, you know, being in a different country. You know, it's like it was Oklahoma and went yeah. to bed last night, but all of a sudden, By boom. By the way, did y'all see the Babylon Bee article that Elizabeth Warren yeah. called herself warlord of the Oklahoma autonomous zone? That was one that of was their like best. That was, like, the best I've seen in a while. <laughs> Truly the best I've seen in a while. Babylon Bee's best stuff involves Elizabeth Warren. Yes. Like the the Elizabeth Warren episode, uh, the the article that came out the night after she announced that she would not be pursuing the presidency anymore, that she rode back to the reservation and she oh failing to take land back from the from, from the pale faces. <laughs> she drives me nuts, honestly. I don't know, but then I have very I have like super high opinions of like what should and shouldn't be done with Indians. I don't know. I'm uh, just different. We're getting a report from uh, the Wetumpka Civic Center in Elmore County. The absentee ballot results, which my dad's actually there. Really? He's counting some of the ballots. He may actually stop by here later on. Okay. Uh, he's saying right now the ballots for Coleman, granted, they're, they're not done counting, so uh, the ballots for Coleman, 281, more 592. So Moore has, by leaps and bounds, the absentee Elmore County vote. I don't know if that'll propel him to victory. Uh, All right, it go could. Barry. It, that seems to be a pretty good indicator. Ooh, yeah. Trevor Bull's just shooting up. This yeah. Is really surprising, though, because, and don't get me wrong, I'm pleased. I voted for Barry Moore. Um, yeah. I'm really surprised that he's doing as well as he is this early on and having mm-hmm. strong sterling because I figured that Barry, especially being the ag guy that he is and sort of that being his base and where he can go. Uh, to get the vote, that he would actually probably trail early in the night and probably pick it up once some of the more rural precincts start reporting in. So the fact that he's got a lead early is very, very positive for him. Well, I don't know. It could go either way. That's the thing about this stuff is that, like, you know, early on in the 2016 election, it was like Hillary was going to win. And yeah. then out comes Donald Trump like, hey, I'm over here, guys. <laughs> well, uh, the reason that Trump pulled ahead late, too, is because the Rust Belt didn't start announcing until later. That's true. Thing, like, once the Rust Belt, you, you saw, like, once he won Michigan um, and Wisconsin, people mm. were like, oh, yeah, it's over. Yep. Because even, like, with me, who, and I, I predicted Hillary to win, um, I just, all those did, weren't though. even in, in contest for me. I never mm-hmm. even thought of them as possibly going for Trump. Yeah. And mm. they went, because I was looking at, you know, the, the typical ones. Florida, Pennsylvania, Ohio. Mm-hmm. Once he started getting states that nobody expected him to get, it's like, okay, this is this thing's done. He, I, he's still, he's still shocked that he got both, you know, Michigan and Wisconsin, and it looked like he had a decent shot at Minnesota. You know, now obviously that's the one state that stayed blue even during the '84 election, where um, you know Reagan won every other state. But 
it, it really was amazing to see what he pulled off. Because like you, I was trying to keep an eye on the purple states, but then when you see the blue wall falling before your eyes, it was it was quite amazing. Yeah, it was the craziest night. Oh, I don't know, I just don't trust things. Looks like we got an update coming in from WSSA. Around the state. One of the big races today in our area is the Republican nominations for U.S. House District 2. It is former state legislator Barry Moore versus uh, businessman like Jeff Coleman. You see the numbers there. Moore is in the lead. Yeah. But let, let's talk for a minute. Um, I think all of us voted. Now, you guys didn't get to vote in the District 2 race. That's no, correct. We're, we're District 1. Yeah, three. three. three we're, oh. We're, yeah, we're oh. barely in the third. So. Um, I don't know where I live, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that we just. you like most voters. And, yeah. Sorry, I was going to make a woman joke. I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> <laughs> most women. Well, I would make a joke about us getting kicked off of Twitch and YouTube, but. Uh, can't right now because we're only on Facebook Live. Oh, well. Yeah, no. Yeah, we only voted in the District 3 election, and that just included the judges and, um, you know, Sessions versus Tuberville. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And it was a really easy ballot. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty easy for me. I, the only, I only had three. I had District 2 race. Because, let's see, if you guys are District 3, that means you're Mike Rogers. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to call him up and see if I can go to the White House with him. It really is a crying shame that Mike Rogers is going to ruin our trip. <laughs> so, <laughs> can we please get somebody better than Mike Rogers? <laughs> he's not the worst in the hour of delegations, yeah. but he's not the best. Agreed. Yeah, give me a little while and I'll go. He's no Mo Brooks. We'll him. put it that way. No, he's no Mo Brooks and no Gary Palmer. I mean, he's better than Terry Sewell, but. Yeah. That's a Okay, but is that hard to be better than Terry Sewell? Yeah. <laughs> He's better than Martha Roby, who was the previous occupant of District 2. Yet again, is that hard? No, I mean, it's like I said, it's <laughs> Yeah, even then, oh, even then, Roby wasn't terrible. She, But likewise, she certainly wasn't the best, but, you know. She she's... had a less conservative voting record than the Democrat she replaced. Are you serious? Oh, that's yeah. bad. Like, if you're looking wow. at Conservative Review or Heritage or Freedom Works, huh. every single one of them rated Bobby Bright higher than her. Wow. Wow, and she she won pretty much the last election cycle, I think because Bobby Bright had been a former Democrat. So, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people view him with skepticism, saying, all right, so you, are you really a Republican now, or are you right, just kind of, like, yeah. I, I like Bobby Bright personally. He seems like a good dude, but um, he does like some big government spending and some programs, which mm -hmm. is the reason that I couldn't really throw my support behind him in that primary. But, like, he still voted more conservatively than Martha Roby. Yeah, well, yeah. Wow. That's really sad. It's really See, insane. Because I think he wound up in the, like, the low to mid-60s on most of his scores. Martha Roby has been pulling a consistent 54 across all of them. As we're talking about Bobby Bright, all I can think is Bobby Newport. <laughs> <laughs> like, Bobby Newport's never had a real job. <laughs> That's, I love that episode. It's so good. Bobby Newport. <laughs> They had a debate. Uh, I didn't get to see it. I didn't <laughs> get to see it. Last week tonight. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. It what were we doing last like week? Bobby, <laughs> it very much looked like the Bobby Newport Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> I just let everybody have free candy. So, is, so, so who, who is who in this debate? Is this, you know, Bobby Newport was Jeff Coleman? And, uh, yeah. Yeah, much. okay. <laughs> okay gotcha. so you guys know that I'm a professional debater mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and public speaker, and I did that like all through high school and continue to do it today. The only politician that I can think of that is as bad in front of a crowd like that with notes is Ilhan Omar. Have you ever watched Ilhan Omar yeah, no, speak from the role of the house? No. She cannot she say two words without looking down at her notes. She'll say she'll literally like halfway through a sentence go back to her notes and then just start reading verbatim and look up and look down and look up and look down. I mean, it's such broken really sentences. Yeah, exactly. And like I would, you know, you want to like blame it on her from being from like Somalia, but no, no. <laughs> the English language isn't like. It's mm -hmm. way better than every two seconds. Right, but, but that's, we are that's not a language barrier issue. The people. And, and one thing that you'll notice that Ilhan Omar will do is that she'll read every word verbatim. She can't ad-lib at all. 
Mm-hmm. No. And that, that's how Jeff Coleman was last night. Like, if he, if he said the wrong word, even if the word worked in the sentence, if he said the word that wasn't on the sheet of paper, he corrected himself. Wow. How'd that go if, like, he had a question that he didn't know what to do with, like... There was one where he answered, but he didn't answer the question at all. And even the even the uh, debate moderator was like, um, maybe I missed it, but did you actually answer that question? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what is your position on taxes? Um... America? Was, but isn't oh, that was, I remember that question. That was that was actually the question that I, I straight up lost it on camera. I was actually like just laughing in the mic <laughs> for a second, Uh-oh. laughing so hard. Um, they were asking if he had given money, like if the PAC that he was on the board of directors for had given money to a Democrat, and he basically went off into some kind of weird rant about dark money that you could tell he wrote ahead of time that had nothing to do with the question. <laughs> Um, you know, I wish they had done that with like um, Tommy Tuberville and Jeff Sessions. Well, yeah, Tuberville well, wouldn't debate. That's though. the thing. Yeah, and, yeah and Tuberville wouldn't come out. That, Jeff shouldn't have debated. No, <laughs> but I mean, it would have been great to see it because I think I've seen some things like no, we were talking to Jeff Sessions and they were talking mm. about how like Tommy Tuberville's um, I don't know, his super PAC had like said things like Trump sucks and all this and. Yes. Which, you're trying to get Trump taken down, which is hilarious because he's he's campaigning right now as like the most Trumpian ever to be a Trumpian. Yeah. You know, I I got to say and I was talking about this last night. It was kind of like my closing monologue right before the debate. One thing that has irritated me to no end, and I I know that you guys were like Laura, you were pro Trump way before I was. I'm and, like still pro Trump. And well, yeah. Um and and Matt, you too. Um, I was very late to that party, and I'm still a lot more hesitant than most of the people. And I, and, most you know, people in the pro-Trump camp are like, hey, pro-Trump? Right. <laughs> but but you know what I'm saying here is that, like, I, I, I'm just giving the audience some baseline to go off of because yeah. that's where I am. But, like, I'm so irritated with the fact that basically both of these campaigns, whether you're talking about Moore Coleman, whether you're talking about Sessions, Tuberville, like, it's all become a contest of who likes Trump most. Yeah. And that's uh, just a bad place to be. Well, I, I think I that's because you're playing to an Alabama crowd. And here in the South, the big things are America and our guns. America right now is basically the Trump platform. Oh, unfortunately, it's gotten to the point to where, like, if you're not a Trump fan, you're not an American. Well, yeah. that's because he really is. I mean, to us, it's he is the, I don't know, he's the most patriotic out there, or the most vocally patriotic of all of our politicians. And I think that's really the mindset is, you know, because he's standing up for us, those of us that disagree with this new liberal woke crowd, he's standing up for our views. Then we're just like, well, if you're not with them, then you're with the liberal mob. And right, which, that was the wrong voice to do. <laughs> I should have gone Southern. You know, it, you know, it is a bad look, and, and that's the thing that you were kind of alluding to is that it's, it's not a great standard to have or a great way to think about it. Yeah. But regardless of – because I don't think that that's the right way to handle it. But no. you understand why. Like, the whole Trump thing and the reason that he's in office now is he was the one that most convinced the American people, I will be the stopgap. I am going to be the levy that keeps back the tide of this new woke world order thing. Mm-hmm. And, well, you know, so I get funny. that message. Like, I'm, I'm right there with him on that. Mm-hmm. And um, he has been so far. Mm, What's he's, hilarious. he's done better in some areas than others, but yes, he, yeah. he has done that to a great degree. And what's humorous to me is all these liberals like, how in the world did Trump happen? And like, well, you created him, so... Well, yeah, it's true. Here's the thing. Y'all have seen, <laughs> um, I don't know how familiar you are with it, but you guys have seen The Dark Knight, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. One of the things that The Dark Knight gets really well uh, is that Batman is the, ant- uh, Batman is the, the alpha. He's the origin. And then the bad guys are the reaction to the Batman. Mm -hmm. Joker. Right. Now, I'm not trying to cast Trump as the bad guy. I'm just using this as an analogy here. Mm -hmm. Um, But in a lot of ways, they don't understand why Trump exists. Trump is the answer to them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree. I mean, you go around and, you know, like, granted, there, you know, there are people that probably are, you know, racist who did vote for Trump, but there are a whole bunch of people that aren't that voted for him anyway. You know why? Because you, you, the left spends, you know, generations telling a whole bunch of innocent people that you're horrible, that you're racist, that you're classist, that you're, you know, whatever other kind of, 
you know, anti-minority slur that you want to throw in there. And I, I have to think that the vast majority of Americans simply are not. They do exist, but that's not most of us. So the left beats innocent people up for a long time, claiming that they're all these horrible things, and they get tired of it. And all of a sudden, one guy comes along who just doesn't give a rip about the politically correct orthodoxy and gives it right back to them. And I think, yeah, the, you know, out of really being sick of being accused of, of, of these things all their life, they get behind him because they're happy that somebody just came back and – punched political correctness right in the face so yeah, yeah so i i agree it, the I agree left absolutely created trump yeah they did they did well that's the thing i i think he's definitely the origin hey matt bump up your mic a little bit all right i think you're you're a little low all right turning it the right way can you hear me now uh give me one more all right can you hear me now yeah yeah we got you all right you should thanks. be good now all right cool yeah just making sure because i didn't want people Thank to you. miss that i think the line babe is good the what <laughs> God. <laughs> well, that guy sold out. So. <laughs> yeah, he did, didn't he? Yeah. That was sad. Let's see. Oh my gosh, I I hate that I missed that name. What is that? Schnogglegoss? Yeah, yeah. Snodgrass. Snodgrass. Yeah. Snodgrass. You can't make this up. I feel like if your name is Snodgrass, then as soon as you turn 19, the first thing that you should do is go down to the probate court and file an application to change your name. Yeah. This the Snodgrass tastes like Snodgrass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I will say this, though. Studies have shown this in politics. The weirder your name is, the more likely you are to actually get elected. Like, mm. having a weird, goofy name that people remember actually helps you. Wow. You know how many yeah. Smiths there are? Clarks. Yeah. You know how many Will Smiths there are? <laughs> you know how many Clarks there are? That's a thing. There's a lot yeah. of Clarks. And mm -hmm. then, like, there's weird ways to spell it. But I'll tell you, it's so much better than when I had to tell people, my name is Glidewell. I remember Glide, our like imaging guy had a conniption. <laughs> like, it's not hard, guys. <laughs> you know our imaging guy still has doesn't pronounce my name correctly? Still? Yeah. Still. It's, wow. It's, it's been how many years? It's fine. I, I really don't care. If people refer to me as Colquitt, I'll answer to that. It's frankly like if you were saying it like it's spelled, Colquitt mm -hmm. would be the technically correct way to spell it. I think it got to be Colquitt just because – my entire family is Southern, and we tend to be lazy when we talk, so it's just yeah. like, say, just say it real fast. Yeah, but you get a preference for how your family says your name. Like, I'm very particular about how people say my first name. Yeah. Um, I maybe, don't know. Maybe maybe I should uh, be like, uh, you pronounce it crowbar. It's <laughs> There's a lot of <laughs> silent <laughs> letters in there. <laughs> I had to tell people, like, Laura, it's Laura. <laughs> so, yeah, funny or fact. Laura. Yeah, is when, you know, I met her, and even after we started dating for a little while, I, you know, I was going with the hard O, and part Laura. of it is, yeah, part of it is, you know, I think um, being from the North, that's how we say things. If, if you have a name that has that A-U sound in there, we pronounce it as an O. Like, every every Laura that I've known up until I met her that spelled her name the same way pronounced it Laura, like like with an O. Like so, Lorelai, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's not my name. So, unfortunately, I was getting on her nerves for a while, didn't even know it, so... <laughs> like <it's Lara. laughs> See, I think it's funny because I could be wrong. Uh, and Matt, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I think that's more of a, a thing that a girl would be upset about because, frankly, if the girl likes you, you don't really even care if she says your name right. Yeah. <laughs> you want to call me Frank? I'll be Frank today. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> like there's, there's that episode Man. of um, there's that episode of Seinfeld where Elaine is dating a guy named Joel Rifkin who. Of course, he shares a name with the most notorious mass murderer. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one, one of the most notorious serial killers in New York history. And so <laughs> um, I, I think that it's kind of the same thing. Like, she's very concerned about his name. He's not concerned about it. You know, I really didn't care either. I had, like, a friend that was like, he can't even pronounce your name. And I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> but then eventually I was like, you know, maybe I should say something. Yeah. <laughs> eventually I will care. I will say, though, I don't know exactly where it is, but especially in like a dating um, paradigm, I guess is the best right way to say it. There comes a certain point where you can't ask her what her name is anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Like after you've made out with a girl, you can't just admit to her that you can't remember her name. It's it you, doesn't work out. You well. probably shouldn't. Yeah. But can you? I mean, you can. Yeah. But that's going to be the last time you see her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm clearly very special to you. <laughs> My name should be burned in your brain, son. <laughs> it's where your only hope is to grab a mutual friend and 
just cheat. Yeah, just like, watching, yeah. yeah, yeah, or take him aside privately and be like, dude, you got to help me out. This is really, really bad. I forgot <laughs> her name. What is her name again? And then you better cross your fingers and pray that your your friend has your your best interests in heart instead of yeah, <laughs> trying to have some fun. As one of the best wingmen in my fraternity, I actually did that quite That is, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> well, see, I was the perfect wingman because... Uh, you know, I was super nice. Mm-hmm. I was really good at talking at my brothers, and there was zero chance that they were gonna like me instead of them. So <laughs> it was just a really good combination. Oh man, that's not a paradigm that women ever have to really deal with. Yeah, well, because you're women, you don't need that. <laughs> anyway. I don't know. I know some women that need that. <laughs> I could never flirt. In that <laughs> capacity, but yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so I know we're kind of just shooting the breeze here because we've had no new news, unfortunately. We are the breeze. Yes. I got one. Uh, so bad news. New York Times is calling the race for Tuberville right now over Sessions. I'm not quite sure how, how accurate it is. 32%. So there's still, and you know, Jefferson County isn't in yet. Uh, the you know, Mobile and Baldwin counties aren't in. So I, I think it might might be premature to That's, to call yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. The, now, granted, like, I don't think New York Times really cares or has a dog in this fight. That's so a fair I point. I don't think it's like a liberal bias thing or anything like that. I just... I say they. Yeah. Barry Moore's still up by... He's not up by 10 like he was before, but he's still up by 8. That's still... Oh, Bill, Hi- Bill Hightower's ahead as well. Okay. Bill Hightower, who ran for governor this last go-round. New York, Ti- New York Times is breaking down the... Uh, the, the votes in the Senate race per county, and we were talking right before we got on camera. Uh, it's it's strange, but one of the areas right now where um, Sessions is doing best is in Tuscaloosa. So you gotta wonder <laughs> whether it's that old anti-Auburn bias that made people come out and vote for Sessions. It's possible. I mean, this is one of the weirder elections in which you've got a former Auburn cult coach in a state where that matters so much. Like, I think I was talking to my dad the other day, and he was talking about him. Well, if uh, Nick Saban ever ran, would you vote for him? I'm like, no. He's like, but you got to admit, that man could put together a team. Like, I don't care. He could well, be I running mean, against Satan. Vote, I'm voting Satan. I would vote for Nick Saban <laughs> primarily just because he's liberal. I mean, yeah. That, that's the thing. Like, his, He's very clearly a Democrat. I, I but, don't think that he's like a leftist. Like, he's not one of these woke, pro-trans people, per se. Or he's, mm-hmm. not like he's, he's not saying it. But yeah, yeah. But, I, mean, I mean, maybe he does believe that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, he was in favor of Hillary in the last election. Uh, I, he probably, I can't imagine he'd run as a Republican if he did run. Yeah. In Alabama, not running as a Republican means you're basically just practicing. <laughs> Yeah, but I'll tell you what, Nick Saban might be the one Democrat that could get elected in Alabama just because he's Nick Saban. Probably. Probably. Like, I, there are, I have several anecdotes that Nick Saban is actually more powerful than the governor. But that's probably true, though. Yeah. Honestly, oh, yeah. if Nick Saban says it, the state's probably going to do it. I mean, from a legal perspective, of course, like he's not been granted more authority. But I'm talking about, like, if Nick Saban wants something done and the governor wants something else done, who do you think is going to win that fight? Oh, Nick Saban. Like, exactly. It, he has the bully pulpit of Alabama, really and truly. If he just got up there and he was like, I need you to run off the river, row tide, <laughs> they'd do it. Which is funny because Nick Saban's a Yankee. He doesn't even talk about that. Mm-hmm. Row tide. <laughs> Yeah, what's he do here anyway? That's another thing that I think is Dang carpetbagger. Uh, Alabamians have a like a very real animosity. I don't really feel this way, but a lot of Alabam- native Alabamians like myself do. Uh, uh, they, they have a natural animosity for anybody that wasn't like born and raised here, except the football coaches, for whatever reason. Yeah, it's <laughs> so weird. That's a fair point. It's yeah. a very odd phenomenon. I mean, okay, yeah, and speaking of, he's not even from here. Like, Tuberville is oh, yeah, holding yeah. ahead right now, and he doesn't live here. Yeah, uh, that's another thing that I thought would be a bigger deal. Um, it should have been a bigger deal. Mm-hmm. See, I don't think it should have been. Like, I, frankly, I don't care that Tommy Joe. Now, now, of course, I voted for Sessions, and all the Sessions win. That's a legal I didn't issue. Think that, that was an issue. That's a legal issue. You should not legally be able to run 
for a spot here if you don't if you are not legally domiciled here and his voting records show him in Florida his tax records place him in uh, Florida uh, speaking of that I don't know if you saw this story we covered this last night on the show uh, did you know that it turns out that he did not vote for Trump in 2016 Ooh. No. wow so he's been going around telling everybody that he voted for Trump in 2016 he said it at least eight times that I was able to count and then it turns out there was some investigative reporting done like late last week uh, his voting records in Indiana, they were canceled in 2016 for lack of activity. So he didn't vote for anybody in 2016. Wow. Yeah. Now, you know, here's the thing. Personally, I don't have a problem with that. That yeah. doesn't bother me. Except for the fact that he's saying that. Yeah. And the, people are the hypocrisy. relying on it. That means that he's lying, and that yeah. is an issue. Yeah, I, I agree completely. You know, one thing I like about Jeff Sessions is that you know th throughout everything that's happened, he's always maintained independent judgment, and frankly, that's what I want in a statesman. I don't well, want I somebody that's going to walk, you know, lockstep in whatever with whatever their leader says. Um, you know, it, it's like nice if you're different branches of government. yeah. I mean, it's nice if you're generally shooting in the same direction, but I mean, if we just have blind obedience to one person, that's a very big problem. Um, you know, whereas, you know, yeah, Tuberville is making himself to be, you know, the, the most Trump guy that's ever trumped. And, yeah, I, you know, the, the record is showing that's not the case. Yeah. Well, especially when you're talking about, like, you know, he's got a super PAC that apparently was trying to get Trump taken out. And, yeah. You know, it's just he really was not he is not even close to the most pro Trump guy out there. All right, guys, Arguably, Sessions is. By, by all means, keep talking. We'll keep this conversation going, but I need new batteries. So. Okay. Ooh. Anything can happen on a live web show. Yeah. And does all the time. Usually does. Absolutely. But yeah, I think, honestly, Sessions was probably the more, you know, pro-Trump guy out there. And I know that, that yeah. people think it's not true just because of, you know, he stepped down as AG, but... At the same time, if he had not set down his AG, both he and Trump probably would have impe would have been impeached. It's likely true that Trump got off largely because Jeff Sessions stepped down. So. Yeah, agreed, agreed. It's um, it, it, it's it's very sad because uh, you know the the editors of the Wall Street Journal had a very good op-ed on exactly what you were saying, Laura, that if he would have stayed on as AG and he had not recused himself, when, when the uh, DOJ regulations actually required him to recuse himself, then, you know, everything that the left was was screaming about President Trump around the time of his impeachment, it would have been five times worse. And, and you know, the uh, fortunately, the American people got to see the impeachment pr proceedings for the clown show that it really was. But they would have had a legitimate grievance if Sessions wouldn't have taken himself off the case. So he probably did save Trump's presidency by doing the right thing, even when he's hard. I absolutely contend that that is the case. In fact, I would argue that even though the obstruction of justice – I mean if, if Sessions hadn't recused, there's a legitimate case to be made there. Now, yeah. whether or not it would have reached 67 votes in the Senate, that's hard to say. But – there, you could make a very compelling case for obstruction of justice happening if Sessions hadn't recused. Even if Sessions didn't do anything to actually try to obstruct justice, his mere presence in refusing to recuse, from a legal perspective, definitely could have been been a case against Trump in that. Oh, yeah. It looks like AP is calling it for Tuberville. Yeah, it looks like our friends wow. at WSFA are doing the same. Yeah, it, it does appear so. So what, what do you guys think is the likelihood that Tuberville can actually be Doug Jones? Uh, I, I think he winds up beating Doug Jones easily. Like, yeah, I mean, I, there's a good argument to be made that you can slap an R on a paper bag and it would beat Doug Jones. But. Probably. Yeah. You know, one thing I, I mean, can... a, a guy whose nickname is Abortion Jones in Alabama, that's a real hard sell. Well, I think yeah. go well. The, you know, the, the Sessions campaign was bringing things up, and it, it's sad because it, it seemed like they couldn't really attract the uh, the media coverage that they needed. But, you know, they, they brought up um, some matter with. Tommy Tuberville being caught up in uh, some kind of hedge fund, um, you know, mm. fraud case, right. and you know that looks like he he settled his way out of. What I'm here's what I'm wondering about. I am wondering whether the Jones campaign has kept their eye on that and kept their mouth shut, and they're going to bring it out at the last second. Because I hate to say it, but the left is better at playing their cards when it comes to things like timing than the right is. You know, the, the you know the, the right will yeah the, the the right as soon as they figure think they figure out what the truth is, they'll come out and lead with that. And frankly, that's the way things should be. But the left understands True. a lot of times people aren't paying attention until like the week before the election, and that's when they'll drop the scandals. 
But yeah. but the truth is, like that's the smarter play anyway. Yeah. It's just that with Republicans hitting other Republicans, they have motive to do that in the primary. Whereas if you find out, and if it was reversed, it would still be true. Like if there was a fierce Democrat primary going on, and you're the sole Republican. Why would you waste your time bashing your opponents during the primary? Let them beat each other up and yes. then start bringing out the big guns once you know who your opponent's going to be. Um, yeah, yeah, I think no, you nailed I it. Think that's how it and, should be. and then there's also always the possibility that uh, some goober in the primary is going to go, your dad killed JFK, all right? <laughs> <laughs> that could happen. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Poor Teddy boy. Oh, man. We've been listening to uh, Cruz's podcast, The Verdict, and just been so impressed with the content. I mean, oh, it's it, really good. Yeah, like he and Michael Knowles are a surprisingly good pair. I wouldn't have put them together, but it's my stinking favorite. I, I love it. Like between, I listen to that and I listen to Daily Wire, but I love Ted Cruz's podcast probably even more than I love Ben Shapiro, and that says quite a lot. I'm a big Ben Shapiro. I, I do like Ben Shapiro. He's like my seriously, favorite too. Seriously, you like his podcast more than mine? That's just absolutely ridiculous. That's just, that's just <laughs> ridiculous. Shines <laughs> <laughs> my back. <laughs> oh, by the way, did you see today, or maybe it was yesterday, uh, that Ben Shapiro reacted to the Freedom Tunes version of him? No. Okay, so it was great. <laughs> uh, he looked at a whole bunch of like memes and parodies of himself and reacted to them live on the show. And then Freedom Tunes, who was one of the ones that he got a reaction from, Freedom Tunes then did a reaction to his reaction. Wow. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. It was, was Tune Ben Shapiro reacting to real person Ben Shapiro reacting to the Freedom Tunes Ben Shapiro. <laughs> and at one point he's like, okay, folks, seriously, what happened here is apparently they made me, Cartoon Ben Shapiro, into a real person, and I find this parody ridiculous. <laughs> 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 Okay, apparently people are commenting on there, and they're wondering if you could see it. Hmm? Are we able to see comments on the live stream? I am looking at the live stream uh, reactions on the watch party. I, I'm not, I, I can't have it and News Radio 1440 stream pulled up at the same time. Yeah. Which is weird. Sorry, guys. I don't know what's going so on. So if, if you're watching the watch party on my Facebook page, I am monitoring the comments there. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I just uh. One of my friends asked if we could see her comments, and I'm like, "Yeah, I can't see nothing, guys. One of these days, Restream is going to invent, and granted, since we were locked out of Restream for some reason earlier in this uh, uh, broadcast, Hmm. um, I think that at some point, Restream is going to invent a way to look at all of your comments at once. And once they do that, that's going to be very helpful to me. <laughs> but until they do, I've just I can only monitor one at a time. Gotcha. We're 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 looking at the uh, News Radio 1440. Um, yeah. Page. Do we have any comments? If you do, go ahead and read them. Well, we got a couple comments saying that your mic is low. So I, I don't know. If, me? That might yeah. have been fixed now. But yeah, that that might have been when the batteries went out. That sure. I think it probably was. Okay. Uh, yeah. hang on. Let me look. Yeah, I'm I'm still registering on here, so I should be okay. Yeah, if y'all y'all go to the watch party, that's even better. Uh, go to Caleb Colquitt's page, and that's you'll like that better. Hey. Um, also, yeah, right. that's super cool that you love Ben Shapiro, Ashley, because he's super cool. Yeah, I mean Ben Shapiro is a pretty cool guy. Yeah. Cartoon Ben Shapiro is even cooler, in my opinion. I mean Ben Shapiro, like anything. I'm <laughs> maybe a little obsessed with Ben Shapiro. Have you seen uh, Boogaloo Ben? No. The Boogaloo Ben. What is Boogaloo Ben? I have ben? to watch that. Oh, Boogaloo Ben's hysterical. <laughs> okay, you got you got my attention. It's, it's when Beto O'Rourke tries to come and take his children, and so Ben creates a Boogaloo. With <laughs> <laughs> what? This is it's a Freedom <laughs> Tunes parody. Okay. Yeah. Freedom Tunes is the same one that did um Jordan Peterson's. Yes. Yogurt. Their Jordan Peterson one is hysterical. That was amazing. <laughs> no, humans aren't Gogurt too. <laughs> So I That's how it. you get fascism, and I won't go there. No, <laughs> not doing it. I'm, I'm not do. I had a, I had a friend in law school that we studied for the bar together, and like, all, it was Torrance Smith. You remember him? Oh, I love Torrance. And all the time we'd be yeah. watching that, and be like, no. <laughs> By the way, I'm sure, like, because you had more important things to do. But at your wedding, like he and I hung out the entire time. <laughs> That's I have great. pictures That's of great. that. Yeah. Actually, I have like, a couple company. pictures of you me, and me Torrance. And, Torrance. <laughs> and uh, Martin Wisniewski, too. That is an interesting pairing. I, I know. Did, yeah. <laughs> 
Rest in peace, Martin. Great guy. Yeah. <laughs> I miss him. Us too. We have... Yeah, he, he, he was an interesting character. He's absolutely brilliant. His testimony was amazing. But then some of the particularities about the man were, were things that just so funny. Made, made you laugh. Uh, you know, so when, when he passed, for, for those of you guys who don't know, Martin Wyshynowski was a mutual friend of ours. Uh, he had a Harvard PhD, came to know the Lord later in life, and then uh, worked with um, Laura and I at the Foundation for Moral Law. Um, you know, obviously Laura since moved on uh, from, from that too, but... Anyway, he was he, he was a very uh, he, he was a very quirky guy. He was very particular about the way that he wanted things. So when <laughs> when he passed, we were helping clean out his apartment, and uh, I came across an op-ed that he wrote for um, the public discourse that you know uh, Ryan Anderson helps run. It right. was it, it was after uh, the Supreme Court's decision in the Burgefell versus Hodges. So Martin wrote an op-ed, and he picked up on a very particular point, and and, and I, I found the email exchange between the two of them. And Anderson comes back saying, Martin, we think it's great. We just have a few minor changes. So why don't you see what you can do with this? Uh, Martin writes back and he says, Ryan, thank you for your comments. Um, I've got a new version here. And then Ryan replies to him saying, Martin, when we cut something out of your article, it's because we didn't want to publish it on a page. You can't just paste it back in and send it back. (laughs) (laughs) So Martin. And the two of them had a little Mexican standoff. They didn't budge and he didn't publish it. (laughs) Honestly, we were involved in like, you know, one of his friends cleaned out his apartment, but we were involved helping a little bit with it. And we learned so much about Martin we did not know while he was alive. We're just like, what even is this man? Like, it was... Very, very quiet, very secretive kind of guy, but like what? really, really interesting. It yeah. was fun. By the way, um, just looking over the, the numbers here. It looks like WSFA has officially called the race for Tommy Tuberville. Mm. How many's reporting? Did you see? I, I couldn't. I didn't see it. Um, but Tuberville has a really commanding lead, like in the mid 60s. Last yeah. I checked. Yeah. New York Times is saying he's got 63 to 36 over Sessions right now. Yeah, I don't. I don't 45%. think Sessions can come back from that. Oh man, even Tuscaloosa has gone over to Tuberville. That's when you know oh, it's bad. Oh yeah, dang. yeah. That's it. It's done. That was like uh, that, was, that was the holdout there. So, yeah. So look, if if Alabama land is going for Tuberville, like come on guys. That is. Remember, the Tuberville is the man that beat Alabama six years in a row. <laughs> well, and what do you guys think? And I don't care what happens politically, because I mean, obviously, I was voting for Sessions today. That man will always have my love and respect. If nothing else, for that. <laughs> my entire middle school and high school career, I didn't know what it was like to lose to Alabama. That was glorious. Mm. <laughs> I mean that. He does have my heart there. But. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, what here. do you guys think contributed to Tuberville winning over the man who was the long, like one of the longest running senators here? I think now, granted, we're dealing with a what would have happened if scenario, which is never a hundred percent. But I genuinely believe that the only explanation is Trump. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I hate that our politics has become so ridiculously Trump centric that he can even turn a state that for 30 years had one guy as their most popular politician to go to where he loses in a pretty big blowout and a runoff against a guy that has zero political experience. But it I doesn't think that's even the only live explanation. here. It's like Mean well Girls. Said. She doesn't even go here. <laughs> yeah, well said. So, okay. Granted, I'm not like an expert on this movie. I think I've only actually seen it once. But there are so many political lessons to learn from Mean Girls. Like I mean, there is. <laughs> like, we wear pink so much, on Wednesdays. Right. Okay. It's, it's so much like... We wear African garb when we want to be weird. Yeah. So, <laughs> of it, a slave trade tribe. <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> Na- Basically, Nancy, for those of you who don't know, Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats wearing uh, oh, yeah. like African scarves or whatever. I don't even know what the name is. I don't know it. what it's called. But it's basically they were trying to show solidarity with black, which is also hilarious. I mean, we're like, we're cool with that, but like, come on, do it right. Well, I, I I'm actually not cool with it. <laughs> it's cultural All right, this corner's cool with it. <laughs> Oh, you're right. I mean, they might as well be wearing blackface, guys. I'm kidding, like, though. I actually love cultural appropriation. Uh, in fact, you can't <laughs> see it because of the way I have the cameras set up. Um, just in this room alone, like, there's 
almost as much, maybe I'm exaggerating a little, but there's at least as much Japanese culture in my living room as there is American. I'm bearing it as much as I can, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm surprised you held up as well. Yeah, I'm um, working on it. Well, I have you but, I mean, the, right but the weird thing the about American flag, so. That's a good point. But the thing about what was so funny with the Democrats doing that is they chose the tribe that was actually the best <laughs> the known slave for traders. slave trade. <laughs> yeah. The Ashantis. And I'm like, really? Yep. Do your history. It's Do like, where, where did you guys, it's like, did they find on Wikipedia, you know, or something that th this would be a, a good thing? Slave to tribes. Do. Yeah, I can just imagine like, like Nancy <laughs> Pelosi or Chuck Schumer just, you know, like w with basic computer skills doing a basic Google search for, you know, African, you know, tribe garbs. And then the first thing that comes up is like, yeah, we'll go with this. I like <laughs> how you just mimed how they type, because I bet they really do like. <laughs> I could see Nancy Pelosi with Speaking of name. that, and I know that we're jumping subjects okay. here a little bit. Do you remember when Joe Biden was explaining how his campaign will operate during the uh, the COVID-19 problem? No. no. Oh my gosh, it was hysterical. He was saying that... I'm going to well, hide in my basement we, with all the collection of children. He's like, well, um, <laughs> um, I, uh, I've got a crew coming later who's going to set up a... A television studio. He didn't say TV. Oh, he no. said television studio Ooh. in my my <laughs> rec room. And I'm like, why do I feel like that sounds like a heist? Rec room. My crew. The, the last person that had a rec room was the Partridge family in 1964. Uh, and it was Elvis. out of date then. Elvis had one. We're going to communicate with these fancy new things called Palm Pilots. <laughs> <laughs> it's like television I have studio. A carrier pigeon. <laughs> Fly away, my bird. <laughs> um, how much you want to bet, like, his, because, you know, campaigns divvy up different responsibilities, especially for different voting demographics. How much you want to bet, like, his youth outreach chairman is, like, the youngest person in the room at, a, like, a cool 65? Okay. <laughs> so you're assuming that he is a youth outreach person and his youth <laughs> outreach is in his hairy legs. Yeah. That could very well be what that well, is. Well, he does a lot of youth outreach, but that's not the kind I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> he, he does a lot of outreach and then take in. But <laughs> <laughs> the sniff. <sighs> uh, it's hard to sniff people with a mask on. It it's is. Difficult. I feel like that's probably hard for him right I, now. I feel He's like probably that's struggling. probably Joe Biden's personal cross to bear in all of this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, Jeff Sessions... He's making a comeback. He's got 37% now. <laughs> oh, man, <laughs> Come guys. on, Jeff. Come on. You can do it, Jeff. Seriously, though. I hey, did it say how many was reporting? I always miss it. Well, you yeah. know what's crazy? I don't think that they, they showed it. Um, you know what's really crazy here, though? What's that? This is the exact opposite of what I was expecting to happen. I figured that maybe Barry could could eke it out, but it would be a long night, and it, it'd be like at the tail end, and it would be like neck and neck. Mm. And the the Tuberville sessions, or, or let me let me rephrase that. Um, if Barry Moore did eke it out, it would be a long night and it would be neck and neck. But it was more likely that Jeff Coleman was going to win by at least five, if not ten. Mm. And I felt that the sessions race was going to be neck and neck all night. Like yeah, the, I kind there of was no point where it was going to even seem like a blowout, and whoever won, it was going to be like maybe one to two points. So yeah, basically, that... it's going to be you're predicting that that was going to be like most Auburn games. Yes. Yeah, I think that. Well, here's the thing, and and you haven't been an Auburn fan as long as I have. I mean, it's true. See, like what Auburn does now is uh, we just basically sit on our thumbs until you know halfway through the third quarter. Yeah. That's how Auburn yep. goes now. That wasn't the case with Tuberville. <laughs> when Tuberville was the head coach at Auburn, one of two things was going to happen. Either we were going to destroy the other team, or we were going to get behind by mm. two touchdowns and then just give up, and then it would wind, they'd beat us by like 40 points. Mm. Like I don't know what it was about Tuberville's team, and it was always against bad teams. Like He would always wait, lay one egg a year, and I don't know why he did this, but like it would be some team that we should have just destroyed – that Tuberville would get behind by like two touchdowns, like, well, guys, it's it, we're over, we might as well put in the second string. Well, it's clear to me that we have to have this solution. That if if Tuberville wins tonight, then what we have to have is no more of these individual teams per state, right? You have a state team, and then you have a United States Football League, right? It's like better than the NFL because we're not like weird. Okay, See, so get I, this, then we play each other, mm -hmm. and then your senator is your coach. 
I mean, we would definitely win with Tuberville as our senator. Alabama yeah. would be like the best ever. At least we would be first in something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point. I mean, yeah, yeah. So there's that. But it'd be like the only thing we'd be first in. But, but. No, we're first in other things. This is too, how we do that, it. That's our niche. Yeah. For sure. So this is how we do it. This is how we pull out here. I don't know, guys. I'm pretty optimistic. I think we would beat New York all together. Oh, I think we would definitely beat New York. California oh, yeah. has like no prayer whatsoever. No. Yeah, Kamala Harris would just threaten to prosecute everybody later <laughs> on. But <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> California couldn't find any athletes to be on the team because they were all imprisoned. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. I mean, one but... is a big problem yeah. in the football community. Yeah, it is. It, it's an issue. Uh, <laughs> Kamala Harris, the, uh, the, the, the country's mo- most notorious narc. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Notorious narc of all. That's like the one thing that Sessions and Kamala Harris could get along on, I feel like. <laughs> Yeah, that's a fair Sessions point. Sessions does not like him some marijuana. <laughs> he's not, no, not no, no, no. Yeah. He's, he, he's about as tough as prosecutors would get. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I fair. think most criminal people are kind of like, mm, mm, with the marijuana stuff. Especially if you watch it. Um, if you actually watch what happens who have, like, weed connect, people who have weed convictions and stuff, I think it makes you less likely to be for marijuana being legal. Well, Not the saying I practice that. But right. I've um, seen that pattern. But, you know, t- that's the thing. I-, I do dislike, even though, frankly, I just don't like talking about the marijuana thing that much. Not because I'm afraid of it. I just think it's boring. Like, it's not really something that tickles my fancy. I don't care enough to have an opinion on it. See, that's kind of my stance on it. And that's, like, weird because I have an opinion on everything. Right. But I-, I will say this, just sort of as an observation. Um... For the people that that's like a big issue for them with Jeff Sessions, I just kind of look at him and like, I don't really get it. Yeah. But at, at the same time, I do think that, um, you know, it's, it's one of the reasons I think it should be a state issue, frankly. Like, I just think that individual states do that. If, but, but what I was going to say is my, my issue with it is that this new movement to where like the pro making marijuana legal movement has unfortunately come with the side effect of people downplaying its effects. I mean, this is a, a, a drug that does have like severe mind altering consequences that come with it. I mean, I'm sure there's some benefits and I've heard a lot of benefits medically about it, but like, come on guys, it's legitimately a drug for a reason. They made it a drug that was illegal, not because they thought it was kind of fun, you know? Yeah, the, know, the Associated think. Press has officially declared Tuberville the winner. Yeah, New York. I'm seeing that, that from WSFA right now. Yeah, New York Times right now with uh, about 60% of the precincts reporting have you know Tuberville with about an 80,000 vote lead over Sessions. That's. That's I, I don't think you can come back from that. Yeah, I mean he's gonna have to get like every vote in all the precincts that haven't reported yet. Yeah, that's, deal that's just not possible. Yeah. Like, so, since that's pretty much a done deal now, um, yep. let's move on to this. Uh, what do you guys think about Tuberville as a senator? Mm-hmm. Like, obviously, you wanted Sessions to win, but do you think Tuberville will be a good senator? Because, I mean, like, let's be honest, there's maybe like a 0.1% chance that Doug Jones actually winds up winning this thing. I mean, Tuberville, I guess the, mind, the thing that comes to mind for me is, like, who cares? Because what he's going to do, he's going to go out there, he's just going to get lost in the crowd. He's going to be a who cares senator. Yeah, I, I tend, Probably, yeah. I, t- I tend to think so, you know, as well. Um, I mean, you know, for my friends that are been voting for Tuberville, you know, it, it, it seems that the whole reason they got behind him isn't because they were sold on him specifically, but it was either just number one anti-Washington slash anti-establishment, you know, yeah. thing that really, you know, or, or you know, they, they, you know, they like Trump so much that they went for him. Uh, the, the 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 one friend that I talked to that, you know, what. Well, hang on, man. I right? hate to cut you off. Yeah. But it looks like Sessions is giving his concession speech. Okay. Take care of us all through that process and managed to get out of it with his shirt. I worked construction two summers and sold dictionaries and did other things to work my way through college. And great day. I find myself interested in politics, studying the issues, and my wife and I. Uh, became met at college and got involved in Republican 
politics. It's been a real adventure for me. I want to congratulate Tommy Tuberville. He ran a really firm, solid race. He was focused on his goal and on winning. He had a plan to do so, and he was able to do so. He is our Republican nominee. We must stand behind him in November. So i just thinking about where I've been in my life. My wife, Mary, and I uh, have had an incredible adventure. As teenagers, we established the Huntington College Young Republican Club, the first one ever at that college. We had two members only of the Alabama legislature. We were present at the creation of the modern Republican Party in Alabama. And I've watched it grow over the years. Great to see it prosper. We stood up to the demagogic Democrats. We stood up to the good old boy crowd. We stood for principle, for good values, good government, clean officials, uh, doing the right thing every day, working in the public interest. That vision, those principles of law and constitutionalism uh, produced a growing party. And it grew until, at this point, every statewide elected official in Alabama is a Republican, except one, Doug Jones. And that has to end. And that's what I, I believe will be happening uh, in the weeks to come. So ours is an honorable state. A state of good, decent, hardworking, frugal, honest, church-going, frugal, conservative Republicans now. Doug Jones does not need to be our voice in Washington. Doug Jones seeks to have Chuck Schumer be the majority leader in the United States Senate. He wishes to see the policies of Nancy Pelosi prevail over conservative Alabama principles. It is an extraordinary thing. He has used the platform of Alabama voters to advance a liberal democratic agenda too long. That must be in, that must end. The stakes are high. Uh, this party politics in the Senate is of tremendous importance, as most of you know, as a result of um, the uh, fact that every committee is chaired by the party that has the majority in the Congress. So my view about things at this point in history is that the political parties have not been sufficiently sensitive to, understanding of, and responsive to the legitimate wishes of the American people. And I have come to that belief more strongly in recent years. It's really why I chose to make this race. I thought I might have the ability to contribute in some way uh, to the future of our country, in that the Republican Party has the greatest opportunity to build a leading majority in America. But to do so, they need to be more attuned to the values of the people of our country. They really do. For example, uh, immigration. The American people are not against immigration, but they want a lawful system, and they want the kind of immigration that serves the national interest and that does not become a mechanism by which their wages are pulled down and their ability to find a decent job is reduced substantially. They are right about that. They're exactly right about that, but powerful forces out there are on the other side. They want more labor and cheaper labor. That's just what certain businesses do. That's what they always seek. Secondly, I think the American people have been right to resist this religious free trade idea that no matter how bad a competitor cheats you, or if they sell products, China sells products to the United States below cost, closing an American factory, laying off hundreds of American workers, now these people, these religious free traders, think we should send them a thank you note because you can get it a few cents cheaper at Walmart or one of our other stores. American people are not happy with that. American people are not happy that we've allowed China to dominate our, uh, uh, our trade uh, 
situation and they have massive trade surpluses with us, they're not happy with that. They think that uh, that's wrong. And they think we've got involved in too many wars that don't have an end to them, have not served the national interest, and hasn't even helped the people we thought we were trying to help. In all those areas, the American people are right in my opinion. They are essentially correct. And I think it's time for this Republican Party to listen to the Donald Trump agenda because he's talked about those things frankly and openly, and I think they were huge factors in his ability to win that past election. And if he gets on message and stays on it, uh, and stays on those principal positions, I think he'll be in a position to come back and Jeff win. Sessions conceding the U.S. Senate nomination race to Tommy Tuberville, <laughs> a live picture coming to us from Mobile, Alabama. He's, He's talking weird. a lot they about how the right political did, parties, both Republicans and Democrats, not responsive to the interests of the majority of Americans. And that's why a lot of people have been looking for... Yeah. All right, guys. Um... Oh, guys, it's his daughters, the ones they use the bat with. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Here, and it's something that well, the remember, Democratic they're a few seconds behind on. Uh, he's trying to do in on here, Washington. So we'll look they haven't seen that yet, but they're they're going over to uh, Jeff Coleman on the TV up here. That's what Laura was referring to. Is he doing a concession speech? No, I didn't think so. Like, I think he has well, no, no, he is. He is. This is the Teddy Roosevelt quote right here. Yeah, Jeff oh, Coleman yeah. is let's, conceding. Let's go to the points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails, while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither knew victory nor defeat. We were in the arena. I'm proud of you. I thank you for what you did for us. Jeff right, Coleman. That, Jeff Coleman conceding Thank the race to Barry Moore, the winner in the U.S. That's a very in short the US concession speech, House of District course. Two I, race. Right like now we, we want to go to Barry Moore and hear what he has to say. It, so it may have been actually a little bit longer. Well, I imagine he didn't think he'd have to concede. Uh, well, now that's fair. No, like, and I think he, Jeff Coleman had every reason not to think he'd had to concede. That's that. true. Um, it looks like they're going to the Barry Moore campaign. Uh, Barry Moore stepping up to the podium there. So he will be... Uh, giving a victory speech here in a second. So let's go ahead and join him. Uh, now I don't know what to do. I got to stand up here for two, three minutes. Uh, oh, let me let me tell. Can I? Hey, Jonathan, can I tell the backstory? Not yet. Okay. We got to wait eight minutes. This is my boss right here, y'all. This is my boss. It's Jonathan Barbie. I'm going to tell a little backstory about Jonathan. Yeah. Is it okay? <laughs> this yeah. guy we Jeff met Sessions. at oh, going on right now. the Sessions. Republican <laughs> National <laughs> Convention. Yeah. And Jeff looks a little bit like he got punched in the face. Like, <laughs> All right, Barry it's, it's Moore been a rough is still preparing him, to speak sure. to yeah. his supporters. No, he, he we want to go like back got to Jeff Sessions, who just conceded the race to Tommy Tuberville. Yeah, yeah, a little red spot on the left cheek. Right there, yeah. Right below his eye. Like our campaign team. Looks kind of like They have worked their hearts out. They have given their full... Man, I, I do hate that they kind of skipped out on Barry's victory speech, though, but mm -hmm. it's it's just a darn shame that everything happened at the same time. Like, WSP can't hold yeah. that. That's just, they're making a programming decision, and they're going for the statewide race. I understand that. She got some massive pearls on. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, like, those are not real pearls. It's like a sign of Southern that, status. Those are like the Christmas balls. I was actually Christmas just tree. thinking that. Yeah. It's like, yeah. look, it looks like they should be hanging off a Christmas tree. Like, <laughs> Holy cow. I mean, like the balls on this broad. That is honestly the sign <laughs> of a southern woman. The bigger the pearls, the more southern you are. I bet her sweet tea is more sweet than McDonald's. I'd, hey, scale of one to ten, how sweet is my sweet tea? Because you've been drinking a lot of it tonight. All right, is ten like McDonald's level? Um, okay, let, and one let's, let's do it. Tea? Let's do it this way. Um, one is Dolores Umbridge. Okay. Uh, ten is your grandma. Okay. Um, 
I'm going to go solid Dumbledore. Dumbledore. Okay. Yeah. So, what? Seven-ish? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. He's gay. So like, I'm not getting weird. like... <laughs> no, he's totally not gay. But like, no, I mean, I'm not getting diabetes. Okay, so. that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I, I do like my tea sweet though. Um, it's not as sweet though. That's all a surprise. You sound like it's super sweet. I'm like, it's not like that sweet. Yeah, uh, maybe. I, here's the thing. I got because of the Rona, I couldn't get the sugar I normally did, so that may be it. I didn't measure correctly. Uh, um, but anyway, so I like it. Scale. So. Since we're doing scales now, anyway. Um, scale of one to ten, Jeff Sessions concession speech. Are we still on Dolores Umbridge versus? No, Grandma? that that only works for sweet. Um, okay. Um, uh, do we need to come up with another scale? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, one being the worst. Uh-huh. Uh, Jeff Coleman's debate performance. <laughs> <laughs> And 10 being Barry Goldwater's speech at the Republican convention. Oh, okay. Um, I got to think for that one. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it, it's hard choosing between those specific options. I think overall, I, I, I would definitely put it on the the more positive side, I'd say, you know, maybe around um, a seven or so, like you give him, give him points because, you know, he, he, one thing I've liked about sessions all along is, you know, he, he really is a class act, you know, even oh, classy when, dude for sure. Yeah. yeah. Even when Trump was beating him up, I mean, he, you know, he, he still did not revile, you know, in return. He, he only got a little defensive after he'd been more than patient. So here too, yeah, one thing I liked true. about him is, you know, he, he, he came out immediately and, you know, Still with that same classy attitude, so I want to congratulate Tommy Tuberville. Guys, he's our nominee right now, so it's time to get behind him, and we got to beat Doug Jones. He didn't waste any time with that at all, uh, which and, – and, and, you know, in contrast to, you know, Coleman's concession speech, and, and to his credit, we only got to see part of it. Yeah, but, so it's it's hard to it's judge. Hard, yeah. That's why I asked for sessions yeah. first. In, yeah, in, in, but, you know, the little portion that we did see, it didn't seem like, you know, he, he said anything, you know, pro Barrymore, you know, at all. Uh, whereas, yeah, maybe you know, he sessions, did. It's hard. It, may, maybe that's just the part we missed. Yeah, and, it could be. It yeah, could be. He might have. But, but yeah, uh, that's that's fair. So a he couple, had a good thi- quote. couple things as a, uh, a response to that. Uh, first of all, when it comes to Sessions, yeah, super classy guy. And I think that Sessions recognizes that Tuberville, like, Tuberville is at the very least an unknown quantity. He's not like a mushy middle Republican that we know is going to have a garbage voting record and just going to be a warm body. He could very well turn into that. And that's the reason that I went for Sessions is because Tuberville is such an unknown and, yeah. and Sessions is a sure thing. So it I made agree. sense to go with a sure thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, with that, considering uh, that Sessions, I think, is also aware of that reality, he's like, Look, it, it just makes sense to go for Tuberville now. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he's not like you know we're not dealing with the Susan Collins here, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, um, they're and really and truly, when you're looking at who all was running for this position on the Republican side, right? You had most of them that were pretty good alternatives. Okay, yeah, most of there, them. There were several good alternatives. Were good alternatives, especially compared to Doug Jones. Basically, mm-hmm. we all would elect a paper bag over Doug Jones. Mm-hmm. Roy also Moore true. may have been the outlier there. I think he is the one person who could not have beat Doug Jones a second time around. He, the, the way I always phrased it is, all of these candidates are sure things when it comes to them versus Doug Jones, with the exception of Roy Moore. Yeah. Now, can I would Roy agree Moore beat that. him? Maybe. Maybe. But, but it's a question mark. It's Where with everybody else, you know pretty much going away. I think he yeah, probably he, couldn't have. I, th- I think when he ran this time around, he, he was really relying on, you know, heavily on the fact that it was a presidential election year. So you're going to have a lot of those Republicans that stayed at home in uh, 2017. Right. Were, and were and come to out. be fair, yeah. like, let's say that special election happened in conjunction with the presidential election. Roy Moore probably wins that one. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Agreed. I think that's what he was thinking this time around. Which, you know, he had good thoughts, but he probably was the one that would not have been able to be. He's the only one that I question it. Yeah. But but every else was a pretty good alternative. Tuberville's not a terrible alternative to Jeff, Jeff Sessions. No. He's like, definitely going to be better than Doug Jones. That's not hard to be. Doug Jones is like true. the weirdest pick ever. Um. Well, you know, my candidate of choice actually was not Jeff Sessions. Interesting. So Bradley Byrne? Uh, Bradley Byrne was who I voted for in the Were primary. Were you feeling the burn? I was feeling the burn. Ah. Uh, but even Bradley Byrne was not my first choice because you may remember very early in the primary, uh, yeah. John Merrill was running, and I was oh, going to yeah. vote for John Merrill. Oh, well, I Merrill thought you were going for Mooney. 
I did have... like. Well, here's the thing. I love Arnold Mooney. Mm-hmm. That man has like almost no chance of yeah. becoming the it, like. Every time I would talk about Arnold Mooney, my response was, who? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, like, well, and, you know, they're men of good principle that also were like, who? Exactly. Thing? Like, and I think that's a lot of the issue in politics is that you have men of really good principle, but we're also like, okay, but who cares? Well, here's the thing. Like, who it, are you? <laughs> in, in Alabama, this is true basically nationwide, but especially in Alabama, yeah. name recognition is everything. Yeah. Almost universally – the candidate that has the best name recognition wins. That's politically true. I mean, across the board. So it's, you don't right, have... Right, it's almost true everywhere, but it's like super true in Alabama. No, yeah. And, and honestly, that's why incumbents win. Yeah. Incumbents usually win because they have the name recognition and well, we know who you are. Mar- Martha Roby, who Barry Moore is replacing now... Um, All praise. Right. Uh, let's be honest, like Martha Roby did nothing for 10 years and kept winning because she had name recognition. Let's be mm-hmm. honest, Tuberville, it's going to be that way too. Well, that was Tuberville's biggest yeah. advantage. Tuberville, he, he as a nothing. football coach, had higher name recognition than everybody else in his <laughs> primary, with the exception of maybe Jeff Sessions, who was basically on par with. So if Tuberville, was... as a football coach, had great offense. As a politician, <laughs> he may have good defense, but his offense is going to be crap. Let's be honest. Yeah, coming back to the yeah, name yeah, name recognition thing as as well. You know, if, if it was possible for for Alabama to fall in some form of paganism, they probably would hail football coaches as demigods. And yeah. so that's what Tommy Tuberville kind of said. He had that going for it. Yeah, Heracles versus Perseus. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Pretty much. That's this Thanksgiving. Uh, although we may not even have football um, this season, which I don't believe. Like. I don't think the state of Alabama can survive without football person. Yeah. I don't think the world can survive without football. It's, it's kind of like, you know, back during the Prohibition era, um, right. you know, when they, 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 you know, when the Great Depression hit, they repealed Prohibition because it's like the, the situation stinks. We're all depressed. Let's get some kind of relief. By the way, I'm not necessarily endorsing that as, you know, the method sure, of relief. But, but it is, but, yeah, yeah it's indicative is, of what happened. Yeah. So in the same way with Alabama, I mean, if we take football away, I mean, the, you know, other than other than God, football is kind of the one thing that would probably drive away depression for most Alabama. Is. Let's so. be honest, football has like worked its way into churches too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, it's a really big deal, and I, I've been in churches where they prayed for Alabama football. I, I have actually, Real. and I don't want to go way off topic here, but just to add this little anecdote, I have been bothered by the fact that I know that there's a lot of Alabamians, and this is true nationwide. I'm not singling out Alabama, but uh, especially in Alabama, there are a whole bunch of people that are like, got to close churches for a couple months for this. Okay. Oh, they're going to take away football? Uh, no, you're not. That's, like, <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> Jackson, Tennessee was like that with Snoop Dogg. Like the right. mayor was threatening citizens with, if y'all don't go into lockdown, I'm taking away Snoop Dogg. Oh, that's actually, um, <laughs> that's how I characterized this whole thing when we were talking about possibly invoking a shutdown. And I was like, so basically, Meemaw K says, if we're good and stay in our room, we get football in the fall. <laughs> yeah, <basically. laughs> That's her whole strategy. It's basically the case. Yeah, the thing is, it's, it's a good strategy for No, it's Alabama. not a bad strategy, <laughs> politically. <laughs> the only winning strategy here. <laughs> Can't go to church. Eh, okay. Can't do football. <gasps> yeah, exactly. So um, That was truly terrible. Yeah, it looks like they're, they've got was. Barry Moore's uh, victory speech. I guess they're doing a replay, or maybe it's still going, which... Uh, that kind of surprises me. Barry Moore is not really like the most long-winded politician, so if, if that's the case. He had good um, speechwriters. Maybe. I don't know. Pray yeah. with me. And so that gives you a certain amount of comfort when you're going into battle. You know that you, you're covered, and you're covered in the blood. And so um, we, we've had just so much support and prayers. And so, of course, Sherry McCormick, about the only true page. <laughs> Sherry was a super hard worker, you know, super hard worker, and uh, about the only full-time paid staffer I had the Okay, whole so time. now we're in the Oscar nomination. She was just grassroots, you know, we, we've the, always the believed Oscar that you, if you campaign the among the people, really, you will go and, and, and I don't mind it, I'm just saying that's what it is. Like, everybody's yeah. like, okay, yeah. like, okay we'd like to thank my family, like to thank so Jesus, like Sherry was good at getting out and meeting people, and meeting meetings when, you know, when we got shut down, we can't. Yeah, I mean, that's how it goes. I mean, nowadays at the Oscars, nobody gets to talk about Jesus. She's been big in that. Randy Hickman, I Back in the day, that's how it was. I'd like to thank the Academy. Nobody, 
These guys, I don't, I don't know where they find their right, energy, like, but these guys bring it. When I tell I you they that bring now. it, Mr. George, I really like all the time. If I win phone, anything, he got you two I'd votes like today, and Randy was just, I really Randy was up there Gervais wearing the wheels off of that truck. He, he, and Oscar, yeah. Yeah. Like, like I don't know where he would win it in, but I just wanted to go up on stage. I would like to not thank the Academy. Screw all y'all. Just the best thing ever. Honestly, I'm for anybody that just goes up there and like surprises people. Just you. I am there for that. Mr. Lewis Coles. <laughs> Your word means nothing to me. <laughs> if any of you in the audience ever win anything, that and man right do there that, drove like, me when we were working really, video, really hard for endorsements. We drove sure, many a sure. night. I think we did. You know what I just realized? Counties and meetings, and he drove me um, and just drove me. I'm just looking at the screen and, and like me. what our audience is seeing right now. Mm -hmm. This may be the first time the audience has ever seen my legs. Well, <laughs> you should have worn your other shorts. Ladies well, and gentlemen, Caleb has legs. Yes, I know. I'm sure my audience is surprised by this. Uh, this is the first time I've worn pants for an episode, and like I can't remember how long. <laughs> well, at least now they know you wear pants. So. No, I'm kidding. I, I always wear pants on the air because I'm always terrified that there will be a fire and I'll jump up without realizing the camera's still running. <laughs> you know, in the yeah. age of Rona, there there have been a few times with you know reporters doing reports from their houses that you know they have not thought that wearing pants was important. Yeah, and I think see, they wear. I, I think ahead on these things. <laughs> yeah. They, they, they wore in shirts that they thought was long enough to cover everything, but then towards the end of the broadcast, you know, just tilt back in the chair just a little bit, and then everybody notices, hey, hang on a second. It's not wearing pants. Yeah, yeah, that's a problem. Um, I have been known to wear sweatpants in virtual hearings. <laughs> have done that. Yeah. I, I once uh, was wearing a suit from the waist up for a job interview that was virtual. I just – because it was really hot. I mean, suits are hot, and so you need a breeze. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was funny too because uh, the one, one of the one of my roommates walked up and saw that I was like dressed to the nines from the waist up and in my boxers from the down. They're like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> and I was like, "Dude, I'm in a job interview. <laughs> I'm gonna get it, guys." <laughs> I didn't get that job. <laughs> Never mind. It's okay because I got a News Radio 1440 job later. But <laughs> uh, anyway, so. Barrymore, I think, is – like if his voting record in the Alabama State House of Representatives is any indication, Barrymore is going to be very much in the same vein as your Gary Palmers, your Mo Brooks are branching out uh, somewhere along the lines of a Louis Gohmert. Um, I don't think that he's quite like Mike Lee level, but he's going to be one of the most conservative people in the House of Representatives, and – I really appreciate that because we'll have somebody that actually represents Alabama's values as opposed to Martha Roby. I'm looking forward to seeing that. I like the senators that actually stand up and say things that yeah. matter. That's why I really, you know, I love uh, Ted Cruz for that reason. Mike Lee is amazing. I mean, Tim Scott. Yeah. Josh Hawley awesome. is turning into a rock star. Yeah, so I would love for Alabama to finally have one of those back. Yeah, yeah. Then, I mean, if, if Alabama gets a Dane Crenshaw, like, that's a win for us. Oh, yeah. I will take a Dane Crenshaw any day. Yeah, now, I will say that when it comes to, uh, oh, wait, it looks like we, we're coming to Tuberville's victory speech here, so we'll go ahead and, and drop into that. Why is it so fitting it has the guy there? <laughs> All right. Over under on him saying war eagle. It's 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 bold, but I think he'll do it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. Come on, Tubbsy. Thank you, Alabama. Thank you for your trust, your confidence. Okay, here's your the thing. message I of change the fact that he's is American loud tie, and but clear. Since you can't see the field of blue or the stars. All you can see is the red and white. It just looks like a candy cane. That's why I was wondering. Is it an air show or is it yeah. like Supporters, a let me <laughs> congratulate you on a hard fought campaign. You know, being a football coach, I know when you, you get into a bowl game and you lose, one team moves on, the other one doesn't. But you're in the same conference, but you pull for each other. Even after that, this is a great country we live in. I just talked to Senator Sessions, and he was awesome. He said, Coach, I'm all in. He said, Okay, maybe it is just because he's talking about his football, service, but he still what he's feels done like for many years for this state and this country. Oh, yeah. It's 100%. It's hard. 
It's hard being in a public life that long. But I know that... I tell you, I thought we uh, we stuck to Jeff our plan Sessions to and score his more supporters points than the other team within the allotted time, and and that's that's why we're going to be won. behind us. We uh, yeah, we we, we scored. We're going to need scored everybody big. on yeah. deck. This is going to be hard. Winning strategy, coach. Amen. But we do appreciate their support, and now we're all on the same team. I do appreciate the past, him paying some homage to Sessions. Though. Yeah, absolutely. For the past year a and a half. It's a nice change from Trump. He just continually beats Which him is up. the hardest <laughs> dang thing I've ever done. I've traveled to what seemed like every city, town, wow, and crossroads Nolan, That's surprising. in the state of Alabama. I've listened to stories. Wow. <laughs> I've listened to it all. And uh, I've listened to the concerns of everybody. There's a lot of people hurting. And I've been listening. I haven't taken anything for granted. You know, I've stood in the field with farmers, putting their crops in back in planting season a month ago. And they're not only planting that crop to feed their family, but they're planting that crop to feed our families. It's important we understand that. I want to thank Alpha for their support. They've been huge been huge it's been huge and you know i've sat with military we veterans <laughs> who simply want their country that they serve faithful faithfully to keep their promises to them like the va i've talked to many of them i've met with enforcement officers firefighters ambulance drivers who have risked their lives and safety every day to provide help for all of us by the way, I'm not making In fun, just time, an observation. There were In Alabama, as everybody starts today their speech with farmers and vets. We're in masks oh, yeah. one time yes, or another. Good point. I've listened to doctors and nurses thing, just saying. Smart, who have been on the front line battling this China virus, this China unseen China. enemy. The, China virus. the Wuhan virus. In the hospital wards yeah. and have ICU seen, units. Um, Louder with and it's been tough. Uh, quarter Black Garrett talking about the China man. You know, I've no. also conferred with the jobless. Huh? Many I stopped places watching Crowder. I've been really? People have been this out of jobs. not funny anymore. President Trump, I think who, by the way, funny. who's the best yeah, president he's in my life. I used to love I've watched him before I watched this <sighs> hero. Who, by the way, called about 30 minutes ago and wished us luck and congratulated us on what happened today. Who, Trump? Those people so. without jobs yeah. are worried because they don't know what the future holds, and none of us do. But all those stories and a thousand more like them have touched my heart, and I've promised that your voices and all the this voices the first time Trump of the state of Alabama man. will be heard yeah. Not him personally, on the floor but like one of, his of the United yep. States oh, yeah. Senate. Yep. Because so far he's lost every single candidate that he's endorsed, every single one that he's endorsed. You know, so. I've mm -hmm. today reminded. It matters more this time around. My though, mom and because dad. people are seeing more of a left-leaning strategy and what they're wanting. It's coming out higher, and people are like, CR "No, Olive, Trump all the way at all costs." That who at a young age a instilled in me the importance of serving others. At least as much of a factor, if not more. Fighting for what I believe is, is right. Not the. It you know, my dad Trump dropped out of school in the 10th grade. It was that how it was to join the, the military in the World War II. You see I what said I'm saying? Like it he wasn't said, yeah, that Trump endorsed that Tuberville, mule. ergo I must vote for Tuberville. It was, man, Trump really hates Sessions, ergo I must <laughs> but vote for Sessions. That's, that's probably true. Yeah. Yeah. That has to be And that's a big difference. And I will say this about Sessions, even though I really do like him. Sessions is really not used to winning elections. Men and women. Because think about it. How long do you run unopposed? Yeah. Yeah, he's not having a good point. Which is a good point of like... And again, I'm not discouraging him. I like Jeff Sessions. I'm mm -hmm. just saying that like, he, he doesn't have nearly as Europe. much electoral experience as people would Losing think. Losing friends hmm. based on how long he's every been in office. Because he usually runs on votes. for every inch, yeah. every foot, and every step. By war's end, my dad had earned five bronze stars. Now, a bronze star is fighting in a major battle. If you win one or two of those, or earn one or two of those, it's special. At 18 and 19 years old, he earned five of them. He was my hero. He, uh, he earned a Purple Heart, which nowadays is a million-dollar wound. They send you home. Back then, they put him in an infirmary for a month 
and then sent him back to the front lines. He got hit in the back. He had a big hole in his back. And I asked him one day, Dad, you got hit in the back? He said, yes, son, I was running like hell. My tank was on fire. <laughs> I can't imagine what that generation did. But throughout this election, I'll be fighting for many of the same ideals, same principles, and the same God-given freedoms that my father and others like him in the greatest generation fought for so many years ago. Thanks to them. So now, now we turn our eyes towards our next opponent. We've got a little over 100 days because this runoff was pushed back. It really did Democrat like turning Doug into Voldemort Jones is running for re-election. Like, you were expecting his name, but he wasn't going to say it. Like, Alabama. Harry Potter. Well, you can make no mistake about it. What Doug really means is one liberal Alabama. Okay, and Doug Jones like, is that's Alabama. That's one of the worst really? insults I've ever heard. You take heard. your marching orders from Joe Biden. And I mean, come on. Nancy Doug Pelosi, Jones, there's an abundance of material that you can and make Chuck jokes Schumer. out. I mean. And the bartender you AOC. the oopsie candidate. Yeah. And all the liberal candidate? left. That works. Yeah. And Doug Jones, Alabama, the Second Amendment is a dream. Like it's just a thought. Alabama. It's not mm. in the Constitution. Okay, so if you're going to be on a national stage, you got to They're not taking our guns. I'm pulling for you. I'm telling you, he's going to yeah. fade in the back. He's going to win, and then he's going to fade in the background. Nobody's and Doug care Jones is Alabama. You. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to agree. I mean, you yeah, know, I think you're probably right. I hate to say people it. People believe in the Constitution. Yeah, this believe is part in this of, you know, and, and I'm, you know, unless you see something really he bad, voted against vote Brett Kavanaugh. Over, you know, Are you kidding well, I'm me? certainly not voting for Jones, but, you know. Yeah. I was about to say, nothing could get me to vote we for Jones. Yeah, no, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm with you. You might can convince country. me to not vote for Tolan, you can't convince me to vote for Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I think, like, a Damascus Road experience is the only thing that, you know, could, you and know, Doug for, for Jones, Jones could be the only thing that could persuade you to, you know, consider voting for him, but unless that happens. You he spent the first to three years trying to okay. impeach the best yeah. president maybe, we've maybe ever we'll, had, we can talk and he then, voted but... to impeach him. Yeah, agreed. But I don't know, as I'm listening to the speech, it seems to me like Alabama, this is the typical the Alabama politician yeah. stump speech. And this that. is the irony that gets me it's is like the people of Alabama are so sick of regular politicians that get up and there, say Jones, the right Alabama, words, go to Washington and do nothing. So they vote for the guy the who so literally ran a campaign on I like Trump, I drive a truck, I like football, Jones, which is kind Alabama of the same is not the conservative state that we love. Quintessential Alabama. It is. Well, I said this from the very beginning, like even way Liberal back when Tuberville announced for the first Doug time, Jones believes and, uh, he believes I think it was in like right after funding Planned Parenthood, but defunding the police, said, which is, became sort of Folks, the staple of his campaign. Is just his we answer to the question is, I like Trump with our great law enforcement. You know, he wants to do. Yeah. Um, it may be a winning strategy. It is time in Alabama, we have a senator a good strategy. Like, who represents well, Alabama the office, values. Probably. Mm. Not is it a good New York idea for being a senator? Not Chicago values. <laughs> Not liberal Democrat values. We need a senator that believes in our values. It's our mission. It's our movement. It's our moment to the reclaim Alabama Senate seat from Biden, yeah. Schumer, and Pelosi. I have Pelosi. that hat. I'm not kidding. Like, I have that hat. put it firmly hat. back in the conservative column. The honorable column. thing is to have the guy's hat next and to And that him. effort the begins Cowboy right thing. here. Oh, the right now and tonight. Yeah, that's just like a different debate. Yeah, it's got more of a brim than I thought. Yeah, mm -hmm. now that you turn. This that guy's got a neck of a football player, too. Look at that. Not wrong. This has been a great night for Alabama and United States of America. I want to thank everybody here for your support. We got a hard road ahead the next three months. And I'm telling you, I hadn't taken any days off in the last 480, and I'm not going to take them off now. See, I have that hat. There you go. Hey, you I have kidding. that exact so, hat. You're not kidding. You know, it's a shame this. I didn't bring my American flag polo, because then I could point you. out that I'm like the guy with the guitar. With the guy. Bless, <laughs> I don't know, you didn't Alabama. have the Constitution on his. You're That's true. On. That's true. That would have been and awesome if we had, like, United all just States got of off camera for a second and come back and we're, like, doing exact replicas of the guy standing behind Tommy Tuggle. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't be Mexican like the guy wearing the Auburn hat, but I can. <laughs> and he defeats Jeff Sessions, a longtime senator. 
here in Alabama. Jeff Sessions okay. called you him know, tonight. I, and I do. I apparently saying he I just think that vendettas are not a way to recommend Tuberville. people for politics. Also, oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's exactly oh, yeah. what's yeah. happening here. Look, with, with President Trump, this is a guy who, him, like, two decades ago, a journalist made fun of his Jeff hand Sessions size, and to this day, he sends him pictures of his hands. I mean, I'm not saying he's, like, not the best grudge holder. I gotta read this tweet on the air now that it's up. like, we also Well, just called it Tommy Tuberville, one big against Jeff Sessions, will be great senator for the incredible people of Alabama. Doug Jones is a terrible senator who is just a super liberal puppet tonight. for he Schumer and Pelosi, represents he Alabama poorly, would not recommend. That he's ever <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. On to November 3rd. People of Alabama Huge. And the plights <laughs> they <laughs> face. Just to make one correction, he said that his opponent yeah, that in the general exactly election, that thing, Doug right? Jones, has called know. for the defunding See, of the police department. Vendettas are not a way to run politics. No, it's not. They're a great way to run a mob. He is not looking to defund police departments. Here's the thing about Trump that I do find. Racism like amusing, where though. it exists. Just in Here general. again, the um, I, I don't like the way that he does grudges and vendettas, and that does uh, bug me. Yeah. But one thing that is funny is that he's kind of like the stand up comic that all of a sudden, when he finds a joke that everybody finds is funny, he just won't shut up about it until it's like finally way past the point where it's funny. That's not a stand up comic, that's like a two year old. Okay, maybe. But... Yeah, they do it once and it's like, oh, I did it again. I'm funny. <laughs> right. Oh, like, what was it? Two, maybe three weeks ago, he was talking about the NFL, like people kneeling and whatever, like while the country's burning down. And we're oh, like, yeah. Mr. President, maybe we should start thinking about some other things. <laughs> Move on to some other stuff now. But he is entertaining. Nobody yeah. Can deny that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um... Does that guy look like Will Ferrell to you guys? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've, I've made that comparison many times. Wow. Oh, if you think that's good, and I hate to mention this because they're technically not our news partners, but there is a competing news station, <gasps> uh, a, a competing like TV much. station. They're an anchor exactly like Pert Happily. Wow. From Parks and Rec. The I mean, word. Oh, What's her? Exactly <laughs> like it. Wow. I think I know who you're talking about. Yeah. And I actually talked to one of his co-hosts one time. Uh, she was a guest on my program. Mm -hmm. And like, it's... Uh, well, I think this was actually back when she was a guest on Mark Montill's program, and this was back when I was his producer. Anyway, so uh, as soon as like the commercial break started, I started talking to her. I was like, by the way, have you ever thought that your anchor, she goes, looks exactly like Fred Happily? <laughs> like, she yeah. the we all know it's true, guys. Yep. <laughs> okay, his wife is wearing a shirt that looks like she was like a in the Western world. Like, this is like, if she put a skirt with it, she'd be they're perfect kind of for, like, like redeeming that, love, you know? Yeah, they, <laughs> they're kind of all dressed like that. All of, all of Coleman's time. daughters. They kind of look like a Mormon family. A little bit. A little, yeah. That's I could totally really see Jeff sad. Coleman being Mormon. Like, I don't think he is, but I could <laughs> yeah. totally see that. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Some of course, goodness. I guess when you uh, screw the United States military out of $2 million, you can afford some pretty nice clothes. <laughs> Not wrong. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that was, I think, the last of the concession and victory speeches that we're going to be covering. So I'm thinking we should probably be wrapping it up here soon. Any closing thoughts um, on the election going forward? Anything? Well, I don't know. I just encourage, you know, everybody, you know, who's um, – you know, watching tonight, who who is a Christian, just to, you know, go ahead and start praying for Tommy Tuberville right now, especially, you know, we are commanded to pray for our leaders, even if we don't like them. And, you know, for whatever reason, I did a better job of praying for Barack Obama than I have of Donald Trump. Maybe it's because, you know, Obama made me so angry that I try to channel that into something uh, positive. But, Probably not uh, a bad instinct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and, and Tuberville is obviously not a senator, you know, yet, but, uh, I don't know. To, you know, he, he's probably going to be the guy. Uh, probably going to be better than Doug Jones. So let's be praying for him. And you know, I, I, I as I see things right now, I am not optimistic that he's going to be a mover and a shaker. And as all of the sessions is, I'm not. But 
you know, history shows that people that come in and don't really have that much pizzazz to them at the beginning can pleasantly surprise you sometimes as they grow. It does uh, happen. Yeah, you know, one one guy that, uh, you know, sticks out in my mind who fit that really well was actually Clarence Thomas, who is my favorite Supreme Court justice and I think the best that For we've sure. had since Joseph Story. Uh, but, you know, w listening to his autobiography was fascinating because, you know, he, as a young man, he was a liberal. And for most of his adult life, he was pretty moderate. And it really wasn't until, um, you know, towards the end of his time as the EEOC chairman that he started getting into first principles. So he was kind of like, an, I guess, an infant conservative, so to speak, when he started. Um, and, and when he got confirmed to a judge of the D.C. Circuit, the philosophy that hit him was, I'll just call it like it is. And that thought had never really occurred to him before, but he was just like, oh, this simple, that makes sense. And it, so he had some basics of first principles when he got down at the Supreme Court. Frankly, I think, you know, in hindsight, he might have been a risky pick because we didn't know how much depth this guy has. And he's turned out to be the best of the best. So who knows? Tuberville may be like that, too. And that's what I'm praying for, that just, you know, if he gets in office, that God uses him in a in a similar way. Who, who knows? He could be the best senator that Alabama has seen in a very long time. So. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to vote. think so. Um, I mean, for all of Alabama's flaws, we've had pretty decent luck with senators. Mm. Granted, That's true. Shelby was a lot more liberal in his younger days and got a lot more conservative, which almost never happens. It almost always works in the opposite direction. Yeah. Um, I mean, Shelby, I really wouldn't still consider a conservative. Yeah, me neither. But he's far more conservative than he was when he started. I mean, for Pete's sake, he started out as a Democrat. Mm. Um, so he has gotten That's to fair. where he's at least more of a um, a center right vote. He, yeah. He's a reliable center right vote on a mm -hmm. lot of things. He still likes big government, still likes a lot of spending. But you know he he will, especially on the the socially conservative issues, he's a pretty reliable vote mm -hmm. for that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then Sessions, I mean, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because I spent like all week talking about it, but. I mean, Sessions was like a conservative rock star. Yeah, he was. And so I, I kind of really hate to see us lose that, but maybe we wind up getting replaced by somebody that's just as good and, you know, a little bit younger. I hope so. I, I don't think that that's the most likely outcome. If it was, then I would have voted for Tuberville, but we can hope. I always always hope for it, but either way, I mean, a wet rag is better than Doug Jones. Yeah, true. Amen. So I'd rather somebody be up there that at least will name only block any more funding to Planned Parenthood than somebody who's absolutely up there saying we need to block or fund Planned Parenthood and defund the police. He's got American and Alabama principles completely wrong. Well, and I don't we think need to Doug, get him out. Well, here's the thing, and I've been saying of this uh, about Doug Jones for at least six months, if not longer. Doug Jones, like to me, the clear trigger point that he was like it was obvious that he had no intention of winning this election uh was when he just went like full hog on abortion he oh, had, yeah. like he had been in favor of abortion but he'd always kind of played it coy mm -hmm. and always kind of like he would always vote in favor of abortion things but he would always act like he was doing it on a reasonable basis or he was trying to hear the other side uh, a point came, and I'm trying to remember the specific bill that he voted on that I was like, okay, like basically Doug Jones' commentary on this is just basically um, abortion today, abortion tomorrow, abortion forever. Yeah. And like at that point, you just know that he has no intention of actually trying to win the election in Alabama. And I think, and I could be wrong, but I think what happened is Doug Jones is like, look, the odds of me winning this election are practically nothing. Yeah. So I might as well go for broke get a lot of the things that I actually want done, a lot of the policy proposals that I want done, and just be full-on open, uh, not worry about getting reelected, and maybe secure a position at the national DNC or, or work some in, in mm. some capacity with them. Oh, I think that's Good absolutely thought. accurate. I think he yeah. never intended to be anything more than a one-trick pony, and that's basically what he's going through, and... I don't know, but I don't want. To, I don't think we need to be complacent about it, lest we not oh, learn no, the lessons of Jeff Coleman. You know. Yeah. Well, now I'll say this though. That's another thing to bring up is that um, I know that this doesn't represent y'all because y'all aren't District Two, um, but overall, it's not a terrible night because no. with Jeff Sessions, as sad as it is to see him go, 
Um, like we said, there's at least the chance that Tuberville winds up being a lot better than we expected, mm-hmm. and he's going to be better than Doug Jones regardless. Oh, yeah. And then you couple Easy. that with the fact that Barry Moore had actually a pretty, like, decisive victory, which was kind of surprising, over Jeff Coleman, who probably would have been, at the absolute best-case scenario, a warm body in a chair. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, versus Barry, who... I don't know if he's going to be a super vocal guy. Like, I don't know that he'll be a Dane Crenshaw, but he'll at very, the very least be a Gary Palmer, like somebody that's a reliable conservative vote that you can yeah. count on pretty yeah. much all the time. Mm, uh, even yeah. if he's not somebody that's getting a lot of CNN interviews or something like that, and that's fine. Um, I'd rather, if I had to pick between the two, somebody that's getting on the national news a lot and somebody that's actually a reliable conservative vote, I'm going to go with the reliable vote. Every mm-hmm. time. Right. Amen. So overall, not a bad night, really. Not horrible. Thought we would have loved, but you know. Yeah, well, you can't win them all. And no. frankly, the fact that I'm batting 500 right now is way above average for me. <laughs> <laughs> like, my guys, the kiss of death is getting Caleb Calkwit saying, "Yeah, I think I'll vote for that guy." <laughs> <laughs> Generally like speaking, idea. that's how it happens. <laughs> So, vote for the one you don't want. Yeah, over like getting yeah getting. I, I've thought about. Did you that vote too. for Sessions? Yes, I voted. You for doomed Sessions. us all. I Can know. you do me a favor and officially endorse Biden in the upcoming election? Yeah. You did the so good. <laughs> I tell you what, real quick before we go, since that's on the horizon, what do y'all think about that? Like, do you mm. are you buying into the polls that are saying that Biden has as much of a as a double digit lead in some polls on Trump? I buy into zero polls. Zero. They have lied to us in the past. And on top of that, you're not taking into account, you know, okay, so people don't know what to think in the way because this whole pandemic. And the same people who are polling are also saying that, like, I think, what is it, over 50% believe that Biden has dementia? It's a pretty mm-hmm. high number of people who actually believe Biden has dementia. I mean, I think he does too, but so, I I'm mean, not voting for him. And we all agree with that. But, like, the thing is, is, like, you know, the same people are the people who are saying they would vote for Biden. So, first dementia president? Uh, again, I people I in America it. tend to vote against things. They don't vote for things. And so if yeah. they're like, this guy has dementia, I'm still going to vote for him. It's not because they're voting for Biden. It's because they're voting against Trump. Yeah, I'm agreed. I think it could be, like, how I feel about, you know, Doug Jones. But... You know, that's why I really, I just don't trust the polls. I really don't. It called the last election wrong. See, actually, they didn't, though. A lot of people say, well, they got the election wrong. Well, no, they did get it right. Because remember that the polls were yeah. on the popular yeah. vote, and not the, popular the electoral vote college. For her. So that, yeah, that is a fair question. It's like, how do you get an accurate poll that represents where the electoral college stands? But that's that's the one that you really want to go after. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is hard to figure out. So the last poll, if I'm not mistaken, they did underestimate Trump's performance, but only by like a percent and a half. Oh, really? Yeah. So like the, the polls were actually pretty darn accurate for last the last election. So yeah. I actually think that the polls are right. But I also think that the poll today is not indicative of what the poll will be in november so and there's a lot I, I that agree. can change it sure i i, I, I think I, trump's still gotta like pull a rabbit out of his hat to win this thing but yeah you, you know Tr- trump from what i remember i think he was doing fairly well you know up until up until 2020 americans had three pretty good years under president trump's leadership and even at the beginning even when the coronavirus hit and screwed so much up from what i remember from the polling data um at times, especially when things got tough, Trump's numbers for how he was handling the crisis did better than expected. And at that time, you know, the, uh, you know, people were trying to frame this up as like when when a, a crisis hits your country, who's the leader that you want at the helm? Is it you know somebody who's really taking the bull by the horns like Donald Trump or somebody with dementia like Joe Biden? That was, in my opinion, that was working up until. Up until George Floyd got shot and the Black Lives Matter movement took off. Now, uh, yeah, I, I don't think Donald Trump is a racist, but I, I'm not going to lie though. I mean, he he is perceived that way, and and 
Trump, one of his biggest weaknesses, in my opinion, is he doesn't he doesn't speak like a president. He doesn't have that classic rhetoric and the ability to to heal people with his words. He's he's good with the actions, but in terms of his rhetoric, I think right now and he's also people good are at angry. burning people that deserve it. Too. Oh yeah, like, yeah. He's oh, yeah. fantastic at that. But right he's now, he's got a lot of good things that also work against him. Yeah, I think yeah. right now people are looking for somebody who's who's going to be a healer and uh, a reconciler, and this is not Trump's strength. So my thought yeah. is, if if this is if this continues to be the culture up until November. November. Trump's going to have a tough time, but issues change a lot, and Americans have a very short attention span. We're already seeing how the rage from the initial, you know, wave of this stuff ha- is already dying down. You know, so it's probably not going to be the same in November. Well, see, here's one thing that I think is working against Trump, um, and and I do feel for him because I think that this instinct is actually wrong. But whether it's wrong or right, this is just how I observe it. Mm. I think that unfortunately in this country. We've moved to a place to where we value expert opinion way too much. Mm. And I say this as somebody who literally gives an expert opinion every single day, and that's part of my job. Uh, but, but we've gotten to the point to where we value expert opinion so much. And I think that a lot of people that were sort of moderate, not really uh, super pro-Biden or Trump, are looking at this and they're like – they're bothered by the fact that Trump is sometimes cutting against the grain like when it comes to people like Dr. Fauci or Dr. Birx and – and that is because, and Fauci himself has said this, that the president has other concerns other than just medical safety that he has to take into account. That's why we have a president, to look mm-hmm. at all of the issues, talk yeah. to all the experts, and, and then make an informed decision. Problem. Right, and then make an informed decision based on all of that. I think a lot of the American people, frankly, don't like that. Like, they almost wish that the president were an empty shell and the, the like, like Fauci would be basically an ad hoc president for about six months, which is a terrible yeah. idea. <laughs> but I think that's what a lot of people like. And the fact that mm. Joe Biden is basically a vegetable at this point <laughs> is actually something that would appeal to them because they kind of think that if something like this were to happen or we had another big wave of it next year or whatever, that Joe Biden, the fact that he – doesn't really have his his own like driving force would actually be a positive. Maybe I'm reading a little too much into it, but that's Plausible kind theory. of where I think that they are. But I think you bring a good point. I think I think one thing that's fascinating to me is that right now the American people are in a different place than our Congress is. Right, the American people is actually when you think about it, right where the founding fathers want them. They do not care. Like. If you're really, if the theory is right, and they're good with Biden because he's a wet rag, you know. Sure. I think uh, the founding fathers would have preferred that. In fact, for the American people, by the time we got to James Madison, he got elected because nobody cared. They're like, I really don't care who the president is. It's here you go. Well, I'll I'll say it this way. I think that especially with the original vision that our founders intended, um, we certainly concern ourselves too much on a day-to-day basis on who the president is. Like, yeah. there are people that their whole life is defined by the fact that President Trump is president. Trump oh, syndrome. Yep. It's yeah, the most it, ridiculous but, thing but I've ever But on the seen. other side, were there not days where it felt like the most important thing in your life was that Barack Obama was the president? I don't think it's quite as bad. Then. I don't know. I didn't have that. See, I mean, I, I hated did. Obama. Like, I, but... I, I was... It wasn't the bane of my existence. But but the point is, the president and the federal government in general just should not affect your life to that degree. Well, and I think that's what – part of that is because of how Congress acts, right? Sure. If our legislature were doing its job and actually governing and actually passing laws, it would not matter who the president is. Very But much. because they look towards the president to be the yeah. policymaker and yeah. the lawmaker, that's why they end up caring and the American people end up caring because, in essence – the president becomes the lawgiver. Well, uh, originally we always, and, and this was the design of the founders that just made it so brilliant. Um, they figured that the balance of power would be more or less maintained, not by mankind's better angels, but by their own jealousy and greed. Yep. Oh, yeah. Like basically mm-hmm. because the Congress didn't want to lose their own power, they would never allow the president to take more power than he's supposed to. And yet here we are. Yeah, see, cut. They, th- this is what they didn't count on. They didn't count on the American uh, legislature becoming so incredibly Mm short-sighted that they just decide, oh, the president's more or less doing what I want anyway, so let's just, you know, capitulate all of our power to him and let him handle it. 
Um, mm-hmm. because they would think, oh, well, the Congress would, of course, think, well, what if my guy's not in office four years later? It, it's uh, like a passive husband that lets his wife wear the pants, you know? Like, you know, initially you might think, I can't let her be in charge because, you know, it's a power struggle. But as is the case with, you know, a lot of husbands, it's like, you know, we find that, uh, you know, if we can sit back and be, you know, fat and happy, then we're content to let the wives run the show, you know? I and think that, more to the point, it's the, it's the passive husband who is looking towards the next wife. <laughs> and, and that's exactly that's, what's happening oh, that's here. A real thing. It's like the passive legislature that's looking towards the next president, mm. and it's—I mean, it's really sad. Because if 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 the Democrats were smart, which they're not, because they're Democrats, obviously. I think but there's some smart Democrats out there. Quite idiots, frankly. bunch of them. But anyway, the um, conniving maybe, but conniving idiots. But so they're. Well, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, guys. I think you're smart. Anyway, so. If the de- Democrats are smart, if they really didn't like President Trump, what they'd be doing is being jealous for the power that the legislature actually has, and they'd be trying to legislate and work the system of checks and balances that were given by the Constitution. But they're not doing that. Same thing. Republicans did do that during Obama's presidency. Oh, they absolutely did. The legislature really should be working much better, yeah. and then they wouldn't be spending all this time instead of legislating, going after the duly elected president of the United States. Like, come on, well, grow right. up and do the right thing. It, it's it's incorrect in the in the approach. Like the approach of Congress should be, we want to hold on to our own power no matter who the president is, mm-hmm. because we want to reserve that for later when we when we want to push through legislation. What it's become now is, as long as my guy is in office, I'm going to capitulate as much power away from the legislature as possible to let the president handle it. And then when a, when a president of the opposite party is elected, then they just switch. And then all of a sudden you have one side that's the obstructionist and the other side that wants to give away as much power as possible to the new president. And that's not how our system was designed. Yeah. yeah. No, exactly. Yeah, I, I I agree. It's uh, yeah, I, I think another you know factor that's been in play too is I, I think FDR was a game changer with how the country looks at the president. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, I, I think it was at that point that America really started you know looking to the president to be the lead policymaker, and Congress is just kind of like an advisory council that votes his proposals up and down rather than you know the legislature being you know the place where the real policy debates happen. Mm-hmm. But you know, with the Great Depression, we started looking to the president to not only promote the general welfare but provide it and i think you know the idea has stuck ever since oh yeah oh for sure fdr well, was a game changer in so many ways though he, he was um i would argue that woodrow wilson was the first to attempt that but mm. fdr solidified it like, that's a good point uh, wilson woodrow, was the worst <laughs> he was the worst but what he did was he laid the groundwork and then FDR was the one that sort of made that real in the minds of the American public. Like, oh, yeah. Wilson wanted to get there. FDR actually did it. Yeah. Um, and frankly, Wilson may have accomplished it in his lifetime if he hadn't, you know, basically been brain dead by the time that he would have yeah. to run for his third term. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Finally, the Democrat Party was like, no, the guy. It's funny because we're almost in the same situation now. It's like, no, that guy's basically a vegetable. We can't run him again. He's already had one stroke. Like, and yet here we are with a vegetable yeah. running against the president. Well, Biden vegetable. hasn't had a stroke yet. Yet. I mean, I yeah. hope he doesn't. But yeah, you know, I, I'm. Just... Are we sure he's actually alive, though? See, I have a theory about. Um, uh, I have a theory about Ruth Bader Ginsburg that she's actually been dead for a really long time. Dude, I could see that being a thing. <laughs> I can honestly say, you know, she's in the hospital again. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. They, they said that you know took it to the hospital uh, Monday with I think you know fever and chills and he, the, the Supreme Court spokesman said that she's got a possible infection. She um, has the Rona. It could be. Well, I hope not. Yeah, yeah, she. Yeah, oh, she, she she'd survive the Rona. She probably would. Yeah. yeah. I, I tell you what, even though of course I don't like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, that is a tough old bird. Yeah, she, <laughs> is. she is. She is. <laughs> she look, this woman ain't dying. Yeah. You better hope she steps down, but she ain't gonna step down and she ain't dying. Ain't I really I happen. really like I, I don't want anything bad to happen to Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Like, I want her no, to yeah. live as long as she can. I frankly I find it sad. Like and I'm saying this not just because I want her off the court, which of course I do. Yes, get her um, off. I also like I, f- I find it kind of sad that the lifetime appointment has made it to where the Supreme Court justices basically they they pretty much all just die out instead of retiring because like 
come on, spend spend your last years with your family. Like, that's I, a I sad. Know. That's a sad way. We've to gotten way off topic life. from where I started all this, but <laughs> Sorry, again, guys. I, I, I do think that that's that's better. All right, well, we'll go ahead and wrap it up here, guys. Thanks so much for being here with us. Really enjoyed it. I think this actually went far better than I thought it was going to, <laughs> considering how I threw it together at the last second here. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to do more stuff like this, um, maybe even with, with more panelists. Uh, we'll be looking for that in the future. Uh, but we'll keep you up to date on all that. We're probably going to be taking a quick freedom break after this. Uh, got a lot of stuff to do with my other job and, you know, I haven't had a break since Christmas. Oh, Dang. man, you deserve yeah. one. So um, I, I took one off the Monday after Independence Day, but I haven't had like more than one show off since Christmas. So hmm. I'm going to be taking a little time off. We'll be announcing some stuff, big changes at News Radio 1440, uh, big changes to the show. We're probably going to be going with a new format when we do announce that we're coming back. So just stay in touch with the Facebook page, stay in touch with my Twitter feed at Tactics Radio if you want any news on that. We'll see you soon. In the meantime, stay the course, friends. Tactics is a production of News Radio 1440 and Cumulus Media Montgomery. Opinions expressed on this program are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Cumulus Media or our business partners. Graphics by Jessica Dawson. Video production by Jackson Dean. Broadcast studio provided by Faulkner University. Location studio provided by the Dalrada Church of Christ. Copyright 2020.